guests and enthusiastic audience. It gives me an immense pleasure to be your host today. A very good morning to all present here. Our distinguished guests, Dr. Naveen Gupta, Dr. Chetan Chandola, Ms. Swamya Rajgopal, our worthy principal, Sir Dr. Ajay Sharma, Dr. Anirudh Joshi, Journal Secretary, GGDSD College, professors, and my dear participants. We extend to you a warm and cordial welcome to the workshop on innovation development and technology readiness level and commercialization of lab technologies and tech transfer. We gather here to dwell and explore into the dynamic realms of innovation, technology readiness and the critical process of commercializing laboratory discoveries. Now, I would like to invite Dr. Anirudh Joshi, General Secretary, Guswami Ganesh Dutt, Sanatan Dharam College, whose unwavering commitment and exemplary leadership have played a pivotal role in shaping the success of our college community, to share a few words with us. Dr. Naveen Gupta, my ex-colleague in Punjab University, Dr. Ajay Sharma, Soumya, Chetan. It's a pleasure to host you today. It's an age of uh, inventions, but every invention, every innovation, has a philosophy behind it. All things in communication field had a philosophy of economy of effort. When we used to walk, we needed a bullet car. Then cycles, from cycles to motorcycles and scooters, then cars, all for economy of effort. We didn't want to walk more. We didn't want to spend more time while traveling. So we invented so many things. Some good things, some bad things. Atomic power. For instance, had two sides, power generation for the people and destruction that you saw in 1939 in Japan, Hiroshima. I was talking to Dr. Gupta, sitting there, academia invents things, innovate in certain areas where they do not go, businessmen do not go. Intellectuals do their job and private companies enjoy the fruit. They'll make money out of it. <coughs> there are so many government schemes that the companies must spend something on social causes. I'm not sure how many companies are doing it. CSR, social responsibility. I don't know. There was a law when one academic prime minister was in India that every company must have its own research wing. If you go through the budgets, of those companies which are commercially doing very well, they don't spend anything on research. But that doesn't mean you should stop innovation. 
They are part of the society. Our duty is to contribute. Contribute to what? For the welfare of the human being. If there were no computers, then these all children computer se do kaam karte. Mere jaise achhi par kuchh ke bande computer nahi se paate agar their computer nahi hai. Achhi kare. I congratulate Top Rajay, your effort, initiative, Ashima. Your chitti has brought me here. I was not at all intending to come. Ashima's father was my colleague in Pijo. Her mother was a colleague here. She was teaching here. No, I think I have 75 percent parenthood control over her. I wish this initiative a great success. You are one of the wonderful people assembled here who will guide you what to innovate and what not to. Thank you so much. Now I'll request Principal Sir, Dr. Ajay Sharma, Dr. Anirudh Joshi, Dr. Ashma Bhatta Kanvina to present the green welcome to our esteemed speakers. <laughs> Dr. Chetan Chandola. Ms. Soumya Rajagopal. Now I request uh, Ashima, Dr. Ashma Patan and Principal Sir to give the momentum. Dr. Chetan Sir. Ms. Soumya Rajagopal. honor and privilege to welcome Dr. Naveen Gupta, a luminary in the field of industrial microbiology, environmental microbiology and molecular biology. With over 25 years of rich research experience and an impressive publication record of 63 papers with 1955 citations and a H index of 27, Dr. Gupta stands as a beacon of excellence in the realm of microbiology. Dr. Gupta's contribution extend far beyond the laboratory as evidenced by his prolific patent portfolio having three international and one national patent to his name. His accolades including prestigious awards like the Award for Scientific Innovation and Award for Continuous Achievement in Research among others further attest to his outstanding contribution to the scientific community. But, Dr. Gupta's talent are not solely confined to the sciences. He is also a poet of remarkable skill, earning, earning the esteemed Adal Kabir Ritter Award for his contribution to Hindi and Urdu poetry. Moreover, <laughs> moreover, his administrative acumen is unparalleled as demonstrated by his role as the coordinator of the UGC SAP program and his extensive involvement in various committees and outreach initiatives. 
Dr. Gupta's unwavering dedication to academia and his multifaceted expertise make him a truly distinguished figure in the scientific community. His leadership, vision and passion for knowledge serves as an inspiration to us. Without further ado, please join me in welcoming uh, Dr. Naveen Gupta for his talk on Thriving in Constraints, How Resourcefulness Drives Technological Innovation. Sir. College for giving me the opportunity to interact. Uh, I, the relations with this, uh, Dr. Joshi said that uh, uh, I am his ex colleague from Punjab University. I will take it a step ahead. So now I am his present colleague at SD College. Uh, because at SD College, I always give uh, uh, today's feeling I will share after a minute. I always feel uh, like I have come to my own home. It is a longer relationship since I had friendship with Dr. Ajay, Dr. Navneet Batra, Dr. Neetu, Dr. Dhawan, Dr. Shivani, Dr. Ashima, and with the, all students, of course. And that this relation further strengthened when Dr. Ajay Gupta took over as principal of the college. So this further strengthened more uh, frequently involvement into the college activities. So I'm thankful to Dr. Ajay Gupta for that also. <laughs> And today, but uh, I have one, uh, I will not say complain, but I have a little mixed feeling. Mixed feeling, I feel like I am saying that I am saying a poet in my own way, that I have given you a little different way. So, the person who is saying that I have given you a little different way, I will share a thing with you. Uh, I have to close relation as I said with all, of course, uh, Dr. Joshi is a very legendary figure for all of us. Beat Biotechnology Department, all the teachers, Dr. Batra, Dr. Ajay Gupta. When Dr. Ajay became the principal, once I came and I sent a slip. office He came out and he said, Oh, Dr. Sahib, you can't do it in the That is the relation, that is the bond which I have with all of you at SD College. So, uh, okay, today I am on the, this side of the dais, but uh, I am always available, I will always love to be Bamantes also in your department, in your college, always. And of course, I am thankful to all, as I said, Dr. Vikram, Dr. Neetu, Dr. Samriti, Dr. Shivam, and, and Dr. Ashima, Dr. Avneet, Dr. Binashi, Dr. Sonu, and all other students. Uh, I am I'm, I'm thankful to giving this me this opportunity to interact in a different capacity with you, all of you today. And regarding today's program, it's a big initiative. Whatsoever research there, Dr. Joshi also said that we are discussing in the principal's office also. We are doing lots of research, but somewhere some gaps are there, somewhere some directions are misleading or are missing, so that we are not able to translate that research into reality. Uh, but huh, recent past, the things have changed a bit when we have started talking about patents, technology transfers, and uh, persons like Chetanji and Somyaji. They are playing a very good role in translating that research into technology. And, and regarding my today's talk, a part of those talks, some of the faculty members might have already heard of it, uh, but this was well suited for today. Uh, when we talk about patents, technology transfer and all that, I always feel the gaps are at multiple levels. One level is the awareness level, which as I said, in past few years, the efforts are being made that we have to do the patents, we have to do the technology transfer, government is doing a lot. But as the title of my talk is saying that thriving in constraints, still sometime, as I am seeing in the hall, the most of the students, apart from the front row, I am seeing the BSc students or maybe MSc students are sitting in this hall. Some of the things they might understand and some of the things they might not be understanding that what this technology transfer is and they might get lost somewhere that how they can contribute. So in the next 30-35 minutes, 
I will try to tell you that how you can contribute and why you have to start now that you have to contribute. I will be taking some examples from my personal lab and the disclaimer is that is not the idea to not advertise my work. The idea is to just pass on the message that how we can do very useful work. Now, because I think uh, when we, most of the students are biotechnology, microbiology or the allied fields. When the student comes to, uh, Joshi sir, when a student comes to biotechnology in a college, then what he, he is taught, he is taught about cloning. Right? Ugly class mein jata hai, usko jata hai, genetically modified foods. Then he goes to the next, he is a transgenic animal. Then, modification of enzymes. Synthesis of novel molecules. Now, when he passes out after graduation or post-graduation, some are lucky they go to the good institutes, some are lucky who get connected to the persons like Chetanji, some are not. And they land into a situation where they don't see the, all those good facilities, or sometimes in colleges also, sir, we are not able to give them those facilities. But that is not the thing. Uh, my whole training was in molecular biology and uh, I will not go into the details when I joined as a faculty at Punjab University. Uh, I realized that molecular biology has its own limitations, sometimes its own problems. Some of the common limitations are, as I said, sometimes facilities are not there. They are expensive. Lots of tedious work has to be done. And when we genetically modify lots of organisms or the plants or the animal species, they are not stable when they are translated actually at the commercial level. And then, of course, the genetic information at an still plant organism is unknown. ये तो अभी मैंने पल कल मेरे को लगा चेतन जी शायद किसी इंडस्ट्री से आ रहे हैं किसी इंडस्ट्री वाले को बोलो कि कॉलेज में लेक्चर देने आ जाओ वो मना कर देते हैं तो वो कहते हमें तो मना किया हुआ है बंद रखना हो चुप तो वो जो इनफॉरमेशन है इट इस नॉट इन द पब्लिक डोमेन is not good for where high volumes, low cost things has to be seen. We can talk about genetical modification for insulin, but we cannot talk of genetic modification enzyme, Xylenase I will talk about, which we have to use in the pulp industry, in tons or in huge liters. Now then what is the solution? Solution is not ki canteen mein jaake smusa khao. The solution is, we can do good things by doing small small things. Being a microbiologist or microbial biotechnologist, we can isolate something good organisms, we can develop some good processes and they are going to help you. The first story I will share you that how the work at Punjab University helped in the management of the Sukhna Lake or the other bodies. Now about 10 years back, I will be a little quick because the story is a little long, I will be skipping some of the things. Uh, what was the landmark of Chandigarh about 10 years back? Sukhna Lake? And what is today? Elantamon, right? So today it is this. So somewhere gap is there. And if we see, the reasons are many. The reasons are that, of course, some of the changing choices or the, uh, I will say, trend in the gener younger generation. But yes, something we have lost with that particular site also. There are lots of problems like weed overgrowth, silt deposition, maybe less of the water. So I will tell this story that how less of the water we try to address with a very simple technology development. The less water problem is so much that first time in the history, this slide is of I think four or five years back, uh, maybe six, seven years back. So uh, it was so much that first time in the history of high court, judges had to come out of their chambers and they went to the lake that how we can solve this problem. It is so much. Now some of the solutions suggested by the administration were that diverting the surplus supply from the neighboring natural and then some were that putting the supply, surplus water supply in the months of winter into the lake, 
However, all these suggestions have their own problems and uh, I have not put it on record because that will be against the administration. Few years back, administration ne paanch sar waha wo lagaye sambar sambar. Kyu se lake ko bhar dein. It was little ridiculous. So they have their own problems. Now what is the solution? One day I got a call from the director DST, director DST who was there, sir Santosh Kumar. He called me. I was little friendly to him. He told me, "Sir, come to my office. I will discuss with you." And I went to his office. He said to me that I have an idea was his. I have to give him all the credit. He said that this is the treated sewage water. Why do we put it in the lake? Why don't we put it in the lake? Why don't we put it in the lake? I thought, let's go, sir. Let's see what it is. And then, and uh, then, when we thought about it, when I gave a little bit serious mind to it, we realized that it had its own problem. There is less availability of even enough treated sewage water. Right? That was told. That's what the Home Secretary Chandigarh, he told me, I presented my presentation in front of the whole administration. The Home Secretary told me, Oh, Dr. Sahib, what are you talking about? Where is the treated water? 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 Then the other problem was that pipeline supply, whether, how we will take the treated water to the lake? Water is being treated, where is the lake? Where is it? How we will do that? And third was the suitability of water. Anyway, we started working all these three problems. We dug out all the data and we realized that at that time, Chandigarh was the only city who was treating 100% of sewage in its five sewage plants. Now the two or three more sewage plants have been inaugurated by our Home Minister last month only. So Chandigarh is treating this whole sewage treatment, uh, the sewage water, and we have lots of enough of treated sewage water is available. Then Chandigarh was is the only city. I think your college also have. I have seen if you go to the back side of the principal office, there is a red pipe showing the supply of treated sewage water. All the institutions, all the homes which are bigger than 500 uh, yards, uh, they have to take a uh, supply of alternate water to use it for other purposes like irrigation, washing of your vehicles, and all that. Then pipeline. We said, okay, चलो पानी तो है अभी लेक तक पहुंचाएंगे कैसे? When we saw the whole maps, I realized that the golf course has a Sukhna Lake ke saath mein. Already the treated sewage water is being used for the irrigation. So we realized that wahan tak to pipeline hai. Iska matlab Sukhna Lake tak ja sakti hai. And for Chetan ji, they might not have seen the our golf course and Sukhna Lake are side by side. They are adjacent to each other. The third was the suitability of water. But before I come to the suitability of water, uh, the message which the previous two slides I wish to give is when we have to do the transfer of technology, when we have to do the commercialization of something which we have done in the lab, we cannot work in isolation. I cannot say that I am a professor, my work is only to do some, uh, find out some novel organism. I have, how, how, why should I go to the municipal corporation? Why should I search out the maps? Why should I go for the water data? That's how not the things work. We have to work in a totality. We have to work in a very composed way. I think that's what how we have to start with it. Then, uh, suitability of water. That whether it is, our uh, Mukesh Ji who was our chief engineer, chief engineer, he was lots of reservation when we told him this idea. He said, no, 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 no. I don't want to do this. What do you do? Suitability of water. Chandigarh administration gave me a small project for nine to ten months by giving only 4.5 lakh rupees कि आप यार ये देखो कि इसका क्या हो सकता है suitability of water बैठे कि ये नहीं बैठे। So I will cut it short. We checked everything. We checked dissolved solids, COD, BOD, and nitrate, phosphate, density of water, and we realized that in we collected the water samples from the treated sewage water. And from the Sukhna Lake Center, periphery, different seasons, winter, summer, and we realized that most of the parameters it is matching, but only nitrate and phosphate was more. What will happen if we will have more nitrate and phosphate? Students, eutrophication. More nutrients, we will have eutrophication. And another message which I wish to give, uh, I think why I am saying that students have to start now or the younger faculty have to start now. हमने सब कुछ चेक कर लिया एक दिन फिजिक्स की कैंटीन में बैठे चाय पी रहे थे वन फिजिक्स का कुलीग टोल्ड मी कि डॉक्टर सर विद डेंसिटी भी चेक कर लो आई डोंट व्हाई शुड आई चेक द डेंसिटी व्हाट द डेंसिटी हैज टू डू ही सेड नो यू विल नॉट चेक द डेंसिटी 
there will be streams within streams when we will mix the water and there will be a problem. So we checked that and if it matched, the message which I wish to give is that it is not only that biotechnology has to do work with biotechnology department only, you have to go across the department, you have to attend the conferences and lectures conducted by different departments, you have to interact with the uh, experts of different fields, only then you will develop some complete process. So we check that that phosphate and the nitrate is more, little disappointed, so what we did, then Mirko वो याद आया कि B.Sc में कभी पढ़ा था कि denitrifying bacteria होते हैं, right? कहीं पढ़ा था कि phosphate solubilizing bacteria होते हैं। I didn't do this phosphate solubilizing or denitrification in whole of my Ph.D. and after postdocs and all that. All was hardcore molecular biology. But वो B.Sc वाली बात याद थी। So you people have to start now. If you won't attend your classes now seriously, hold this technology transfer तो चेतन जी आप ये help नहीं कर पाएंगे। so you will not be able to develop, you will not be able to translate. Anyway, we started isolating some bacteria, ultimately we isolated a bacteria which could denitrify it, which could solubilize it. I will skip all these slides. That we got some organism in which we could see that it, is, it can denitrify, it can solubilize. Then problem I, which is the biggest problem in lab, what happened in the field? Mein kya ho? Ultimately, drum, ye jo photograph I have simulated, ultimately, drums or wo baltiyan li gai, sukhna lake se paani dhoke leke aai, aapne department ki chat pe rakha, aadha paani sukhna lake ka mix kiya, aadha uska mix kiya, ek natural condition mein rakha, jis mein bird droppings bhi aayengi, dust bhi aayega, and the results you can see, ultimately, if you see the sea bucket, we saw that uh, when we have treated the water with that of organism, there is no eutrophication. There was no phosphate, no nitrate, so it was completely successful. But the story doesn't end here. The report was made, the report was submitted. The study was done for one year, two years. This is what we are talking about, Maxine. Right? That's what we were talking in the office before this function. One day I saw this ad into the newspaper. When I think the flyover was also an ad. Sometimes when administration is struck, कभी कभी वो अच्छा काम करते हैं। I hope nobody is there from the administration, so I can use the word कभी कभी। So कभी कभी वो अच्छा काम करते हैं। Sometimes they give ads like this कि चलो यार शायद लोगों को भी कुछ आता हो। तो इनसे पूछ लेते हैं। नहीं तो वो सोचते हैं कि हम ही आई हैं, हमें ही आता है। तो they give this ad and I read that this administration is saying the late problem is here. If anybody has any idea, contact this Tanu Bedi at this email. I rushed to that director. I said, Ki sir, he had a mail. Laldo. He asked me a question. Again, a message for the students. He said, Dr. Sahib, are you confident about your results? He said, I'm confident. So I wrote a mail. So, message is whatever you are doing, you should be confident enough. So, and ultimately, High Court called us. We presented our data in front of High Court, and the result was this. The result was the High Court gave the directions to the Chandigarh administration that this technology should be tried at prototype level at least, that whether we can do it or not. So it was tried ultimately and uh, not only tried, the sewage treatment plant which is being installed at Kishangarh, the inaugurated by our Home Minister. Uh, let, I'm, I will not say 100% technology is this, but on this idea based, Kishangarh Mare Gaon is a we will put into that lake. Now what happened after this? It gave me lots of popularity. I got publicity in press. I got lots of projects. I got consultancy offers from the corporation. This is my personal gain. And the biggest personal gain was what uh, Dr. Joshi said that they are not translated. I was very confident that with only 5 lakh rupees of funds of the government, I have done something of direct public use. Yes, yes, which yes. public is yes. So it's not, if you, I'm not saying at all that you don't learn molecular biology. I'm myself a molecular biologist. But if you, my title of my lecture was Thriving in Constraints. If you are in constraints, 
if you have less of the facilities, still you can do something. And once again I will say, you can do it only if you will attend your classes now. Then only you will be able to do. Then only you will be able to produce some technology. So, then things started moving. A interesting story. I will take 10, 15 minutes more. जो लेक में पानी से इरिगेशन करते थे, उसमें से लेक में जब वो सॉरी गोल्फ कोर्स में इरिगेशन करते थे, स्मेल आती थी। जिन घरों में पानी की सप्लाई देते थे, उसमें स्मेल आती थी, लोग यूज़ नहीं करते थे। वन डे दे प्रोज़ में अब उनको लगा कि ये बंदा शायद कुछ कमाल कर सकता है, पता नहीं कर सकता था या नहीं कि यार ये स्मेल आती है इसका कुछ करो। ओके वी सेड वी विल ट्राई। दे गेम भी बाल लाख रुपए, ओनली बाल लाख। इधर तो एक लाख रुपए देंगे इसको स्टडी करो कोई हल बताओ। एंड वी रियलाइज्ड दैट एट ए माइक्रोबायोलॉजिस लेवल पे और कुछ नहीं हो रहा ये जो पाइपलाइन सप्लाई है इसमें Interesting part of the story was वो जो उन्होंने पांच पे बनाए हुए हैं कभी गोल्फ कोर्स भी तब जाओ तो वहाँ जाके देखना बड़ी हाई तो बाकी कि वहाँ सारे वो एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन वाले जाते हैं स्मेल आती है स्मेल आती है मैं क्या वहाँ राउंड लगाने मैंने देखा उन्होंने कुओं को कवर कर रखा मैंने आके बोला कि स only वो कुओं के ढक्कन खोलने से उसकी smell 50 percent कम हो गई और मेरे ने वो ढक्कन खुलवाने का administration से दो लाख रुपए लिया, right? दो लाख रुपए वो ढक्कन खुलवाने का लिया और आगे से आगे और consultancy ली और सबसे बड़ी वो satisfaction मिली कि I have solved some problem. So I will say this is also technology transfer. This is also something which we can realize if we cannot do something big. So there are all those consultancy things and ये कल की photographs हैं yesterday evening's photograph at four o'clock now सब्जी मंडी का wet waste है तो वो नहीं कुछ processing होता administration has approached that they letter आप देखो तेईस दो की letter है ये तेईस दो को उन्होंने मैं approach किया कि उसकी क्या करनी है composting हम करते हैं क्या बनाएंगे हम alcohol बनाएंगे हम ये molecular biology करेंगे हम ये बला कर देंगे वो भी करेंगे पर अभी अगर नहीं कर सकते, we can do that. और ये डॉक्टर एसके सोनी है डिपार्टमेंट में। The technology is his, I am just doing the lighting business. So he was approached through me. We are उसकी कंपोस्टिंग कर दो, and we are doing it sir from last four days. ये जो अपना ट्रांसपोर्ट चौंक के साइड में। तो we are doing it and we are getting excellent results. And the whole administration is very excited that if this problem will be solved, that will be great. That whole सब्जी मंडी का जो ये कचरा आता है वेट वेट वेस्ट है तो दैट विल बी सॉल्ड दें अपार्ट फ्रॉम दिस एनवायरमेंटल इश्यूज अनदर थिंग द दिस वी कैन आइसोलेट सम नोवेल इंजाइम्स ना इंजाइम की इंजीनियरिंग करो कोई दिक्कत नहीं है पर अगर इंजीनियरिंग का सवाल लैब में नहीं है एक्सपर्टेज नहीं है वी कैन डू गुड थिंग � and we have developed, I will not go into the details, it's a full lecture otherwise. Uh, it took me 10 years also to do this, but I'm saying in one minute. We developed an enzyme, which could, uh, developed a hair dye, which is totally chemical free. And now this dye is being evaluated by a big uh, company. I have black because it's commercial L'Oreal ये पब्लिकली बोला झूठ जा सकता है ना लिखने में प्रॉब्लम है मैं कल अपने स्टूडेंट्स को हमारे अकली कोर्ट के संबंध आ गए हमने लॉरियल की न्यूज़पेपर ये न्यूज़पेपर रिपोर्ट दे दी इंडियन एक्सप्रेस में कि लॉरियल विल एवेल्यूएट जब क्या यूनिवर्सिटी डाइस अगले दिन हमें कोर्ट के संबंध आगे and if that we are although keeping and some other Godrej have also approached us if that technology got successful the cost of that technology is 500 crore rupees right so and even today although it is at trial stage already we have earned about 25 lakh rupees to the Punjab University as the sample so we could do this so using simple microbiology to BSc or MSc we could do we could approach the companies and we could tech transfer. I have been doing lots of work with pulp and paper industry 
from last 20 25 years couple of patents i have and all these industries this technology they are using those enzyme as technology level why i am showing this when i am in my msc at my university isolated organism you will you can search it google it it is baseless species ng27 isolated that organism it was producing a very thermostable alkali stable xylenase which is used in pulp bio bleaching isolation of that single bacteria gave me everything in life because of which i am standing here isolating that bacteria gave me my msc that bacteria gave me my phd my projects my patents whole of biodata which you have heard the 50 or 60% of that is because of that one organism which i isolated in my msc not phd in my msc and that organism we used at number of places we used uh, in the pulp and paper technology bio bleaching bio remediation and all that then the leather industry we are doing some work with leather leather industry again why i am showing these different works uh, to give you the students the message in leather industry mein de hairing pe kaam hota hai all of you have read in your classes proteins are proteins se kaam karo hair utar jayenge one day are uh, in one of the conference i asked some of the experts ki yaar ye enzyme pe pura leather research institute hai hamare paas in india phir bhi ye use kyon nahi karte karte to sulfide se hai samasya kya hai dr saxena ne delhi mein bahut kaam kiya is in one of the conference i asked him he said ki navin kuch environmental issue hai unhone bhi mere ko pura rasta nahi dikha ultimately i thought ki is pe kaam karna hai maine apne sare research scholars ko ye isme photographs hai isme research scholar ko car mein bithaya hum leather complex ko pura thala gaye jab wahan ja ke maine baat ki workers ke sath the message is you have to go to the site you have to go ab ye dekho ye wali slide jo maine dikhai hai this one ye jo dr soni mere sath khade hai he is one of the senior most professors of my department कल मैंने देखा वो वहां पे जाके मिक्स कर रहे हैं खुद कचरे को लेके हमने मिक्स किया सो यू हैव टू डू ऑल दैट वी कैन नॉट वर्क इन आइसोलेशन सो वी वेंट टू दैट लेदर इंडस्ट्री आई टॉक टू द अनस्किल्ड लेबरर्स एंड द तो ये एंजाइम्स क्यों नहीं यूज करते कंदो सर छोड़ो जी वो कभी काम करता थे कभी नहीं करता दो के महीने करेगा फिर रुक जाएगा आई होप यू विल अंडरस्टैंड दैट नॉट अ पंजाबी सो देन आई रियलाइज्ड कि दोस एंजाइम्स आर वर्किंग इन साउथ इंडिया but north india it won't work because here the environmental variations are so much sardi mein yahan pani ka temperature 5 degree 6 degree ho jayega garmiyon mein 40 degree ho jayega wo enzyme bechara kya kare it won't work it might work in kerala it might work in tamil nadu but in north india it won't work so that idea came we came back and we isolated some enzymes which could work in wide temperature pH. right ultimately we made some collaborations and we got some uh, now db dst has given us 40 lakh rupees to upscale that enzyme uh, that process to few tons of leather from the lab scale the same is with this denim bio bleaching jo aap pehnte ho we did i will not go into the details we are doing some work on this which we are able to transmit bio remediation and yes so i did hold this if you will see my bio data a 50% paper on molecular biology pe hai they of course that is also important right abhi dr joshi mere ko keh rahe the principal office mein ki dr so basic the pure sciences ke department they are they are they have always done great to the university i very much agree to him i very much agree and very much emphasize that yes we have to learn main ye nahi keh raha ki microbiology class se lao molecular biology wali class mein se bhag jao so you have to tend that also i am only saying you have to use your resources at your best you have to do the learn start the things now aur jitna maine upar kaam jitna molecular biology wala kaam tha usse mere ko paper upar mile par koi technology transfer nahi hua right i could not do anything jo ki jo microbiology ki jo ye molecular biology ka project mile they must be 1 crore 70 lakh ka project hai 50 lakh ka project hai टेक्नोलॉजी ट्रांसफर किससे होता है जो पांच लाख था एक लाख था दो लाख था इसमें क्या यूज किया सिंपल वही फैक्ट्री प्लेट वही स्पिरिट लैम वही पाइपेट वही फ्लास्क सो एग्जैक्ट आई फंड शुड नॉट बी टेकन एज एन एक्सक्यूज बाय द यंगर फैकल्टी एंड द स्टूडेंट्स 
ਕਿ ਨਹੀਂ ਯਾਰ ਡਿਪਾਰਟਮੈਂਟ ਵਿੱਚ ਕੁਝ ਨਹੀਂ ਹੁੰਦਾ ਐਵੇਂ ਕਾਲਜ ਸਾਨੂੰ ਕੁਝ ਨਹੀਂ ਦਿੰਦਾ ਐਵੇਂ ਧੋਖਾ ਜਾ ਦੇਈ ਜਾਂਦਾ ਆ ਤਾਂ ਇਨਸਟਰੂਮੈਂਟ ਚੱਲਦਾ ਨਹੀਂ ਤੇ ਆ ਵੀ ਨਹੀਂ ਚੱਲਦਾ ਆ ਵੀ ਨਹੀਂ ਚੱਲਦਾ ਸੀ ਕੀ ਬਾਇਓ ਟੈਕਨੋਲੋਜੀ ਕਰੀਏ ਦੈਟ ਇਜ਼ ਨਾਟ ਦਾ ਕੇਸ ਯੂ ਕੈਨ ਡੂ ਲੋਟਸ ਆਫ ਥਿੰਗਸ ਸੋ ਯੂ ਹੈਵ ਟੂ ਓਨਲੀ ਥਿੰਕ ਡਿਫਰੈਂਟਲੀ ਇਹ ਪੂਰਾ ਲੈਕਚਰ ਥਾ ਮੇਰਾ ਕ੍ਰੀਏਟਿਵਿਟੀ ਦੇ ਮੈਨੇ ਉਸ ਲੈਟਰ ਸਾਰੀ ਹਟਾ ਦੀ ਯੂ ਹੈਵ ਟੂ ਬੀ ਸਟਾਰਟ ਨਾਓ ਯੂ ਹੈਵ ਟੂ ਡੂ ਮਲਟੀਡਿਸਪਲਿਨਰੀ ਵਰਕਸ ਯੂ have to stop finding excuses and of course you have to think in a little creative way you have to think little differently then you can contribute and being creative i take ye slide mere ko bahut achhi lagti hai right ki jab hum kisi ko chahte hain to puri kainat hamara saath dene lag jati hai so that is you jab classes ab acche se padhoge to kal ko जो सौम्य जी चेतन जी करने की कोशिश कर रहे हैं जो हमारी गवर्नमेंट करने की कोशिश कर रहे हैं जो हमारी सोसाइटी की रिक्वायरमेंट है वी शुड बी एबल वी विल बी एबल टू डू इट एंड इन द एंड आई विल एंड विद दिस वन शेयर ऑफ माइंड दैट छोटी सी सही हम एक कोशिश कर तो सकते हैं सिला ना मिले तो क्या फर्ज अदा कर तो सकते हैं माना जालिम ने कब्जा रखा है सूरज के उजाले को जुगनू की मानिंद जरा रोशनी कर तो सकते हैं पिछले हफ्ते चंडीगढ़ यूनिवर्सिटी को एक लेक्चर में बोला मैं ये चाहता हूँ कि आप सभी वो जुगनू बन जाओ जो कि वो थोड़ी थोड़ी रोशनी को मिला के हम वो सपने सारे रियलाइज कर पाए विच वी सी एंड वी सी दैट सपने सपने रह जाते हैं वो सारे के सारे वो जुगनू बन के अगर थोड़ी थोड़ी रोशनी करोगे यू बी एबल टू डू दिंग्स सो दैट्स वॉट आई हैव टू से दैट टेक्नोलॉजी ट्रांसफर कैन बी डन इट वर्क यू जस्ट यू हैव टू चेंज योर माइंड थैंक यू anybody has to ask anything like that okay then we can interact later on thank you <laughs> thank you so much sir for sharing sharing your insights with us It is my distinct pleasure to introduce our distinguished guest Dr. Chetan Chandola. Armed with an impressive academic background, Dr. Chetan holds 10 years of experience in academic research focusing on neuroscience, macular degeneration and targeted drug delivery. He has a PhD in neuroscience from the University of Insabria, Varese, Italy. He also worked as a post doctoral fellow at center for cellular and molecular platform bangalore and the university of helsinki finland in a consortium research project wherein he worked on the aptamer technology and identified a novel target for targeted delivery to specific retinal cells additionally dr chetan has also authored several peer reviewed research publications reviews and a book chapter he also has been recognized for being an outstanding speaker at several forums in different roles dr chetan is currently working at the office of technology transfer as a technology transfer specialist and is actively engaged in identifying technologies for licensing and tech transfer to the industry So please join me in welcoming Dr. Chetan Chandola for his talk on entrepreneurship ecosystem. Good morning everyone. I'm Chetan from the Office of Technology Transfer in Seekam Bangalore. First of all, I want to thank uh, the entire uh, all the students for taking out time on the faculties and uh, the administration at the SD College for inviting us here for the talk uh, i have two talks one is the about the first one which is this one is about the about the entrepreneurship and the startup ecosystem that c camp is having and then after that i will talk about in the second talk about the technology transfer and technology uh, licensing which dr navin is already doing excellently throughout his talk he said many things which resonate with what the office of technology transfer is doing and uh, i think i can give a one hour talk on just the key points that he raised which i found very interesting 
uh, from the experience from the research work and the tech transfer of the work that he has done uh, over his career. Very nice, very exciting, uh, very impactful. Uh, so I will come straight to this uh, current topic. This one, uh, so here I will give you a quick briefing about uh, entrepreneurship ecosystem about C Camp to start with. So, C Camp is, uh, stands for Center for Cellular and Molecular Platforms. It is uh, one of the four institutions, one of the four cluster institutions, house, uh, also known as BLISC, that means uh, Bangalore Life Science Cluster. If you see, there are uh, there are four institutes here. One is CCAMP, which is the startup enabler. Second one is the NCBS, that is National Center for Biological Science. They work only on fundamental research, and as Dr. Naveen said, fundamental research, that is basic research, is of utmost importance because any translation research, any technology development that we do, essentially evolves only from fundamental research. Without that, there can be there can be any tech development, nor can be there any tech transfer. Uh, then there is another institute which is in STEM there, Institute of Stem Cell Research. They work mainly on uh, stem cell research. And the latest addition in our cluster is the TICS, Tata Institute of Genomics and Society. They do a lot of uh, translation research, mainly on crop improvement, crop improvement, making a climate uh, resilient crops, as well as uh, uh, rare diseases, and uh, tropical, tropical diseases, for example, uh, dengue, chikungunya, malaria, etc. So my talk is focused on CCAMP work. CCAMP was uh, established uh, almost 15 years ago under... So uh, CCAMP was established uh, almost 15 years ago under the under Department of Biotechnology, Ministry of Science and Technology. The very reason of uh, making this institute was that there is a gap between academic research and uh, industry in India. Even now it is there, but there it was more so almost 15 years ago. So with the vision of uh, Dr. M. K. Ban, who was Secretary of DBT at that time, uh, to bridge this gap, the institute was uh, formulated. Also, another a reason for the institute was to provide cutting edge life science research and, and innovations to the academic researchers. How is it enabling entrepreneurship ecosystem? Is that uh, it, pro it is having a set of uh, state of the art technologies under one roof. The idea was to give all the technology platforms under one roof so that anybody, any researcher across the country can utilize them and we get projects from across the country. Second thing is uh, offering collaboration and connect uh, of uh, academia with the industry. And third one, which is again one of the key, key uh, deliverables of CCAMP is that how to nurture innovations. So CCAMP is partnered with different funding agencies uh, for more than 15 to 18 uh, funding, grants, uh, funding grants, mainly for startups. If you are somebody, if you are a student, or things about entrepreneurship, or having your own startup, or any innovative research, you can at least check the website of CCAM, and you can see what are the activities, what are the programs that CCAM is running, where you can be a part of. For example, particularly for young students, there is EUL Fellowship, as well as SIAP Fellowship, and many other programs which are uh, startup related. You can check out that. Uh, this is uh, an impact slide for CCAM. Uh, so we, as I mentioned, that we have many technology platforms, which I will be showing in the upcoming slide. And these, uh, you can see across the country, there are many researchers, be it startups, industry, or academia. They have utilized these uh, technology platforms for their own research work. Um, from these inquiries, they have come up from more than 425 organizations, and for more than 400 propos proposals we have worked with 
to facilitate their research. When it comes to uh, startup uh, ecosystem, CCAM is uh, among the pioneer startup ecosystems and one of the most thriving and enabling startup ecosystems in India, having supported more than 390 startups uh, physically within the campus. We do have also the facility of having virtual incubation so that if you cannot physically incubate your startup in CCAM in Bangalore, but you are supposed in Chandigarh and you want some mentorship support, that also is uh, possible through virtual mentorship, virtual incubation. These are the technology platforms that uh, CCAMP is, is having. Uh, all the state-of-the-art technologies, be it uh, mass spec, flow cytometry, imaging, high throughput uh, drug screening, structured determination using NMR, X-ray crystallography, and cryo-electron microscopy, and many more. Uh, I am particularly from the technology transfer vertical. So if you have any innovation and you are interested in filing a patent, then uh, we can help in uh, IP filing as well as uh, technology licensing activities. Uh, we, uh, this is again the similar number, so I will uh, skip this slide. When we talk about enabling uh, startups in the life science domain, we are mainly working in three sectors. One is healthcare, second agriculture, and then environment. In healthcare, again, there could be medical device development, uh, there is also diagnostics and therapeutics. Many such startups have been incubated in CCAM and they are doing a very positive, impactful work. I can give some examples. For example, uh, 3D, there is one uh, Pandorum Technologies, which, is, which has made uh, 3D lever uh, for uh, drug screening and other applications. They are also working on uh, 3D uh, cornea for uh, corneal replacement in patients. Then uh, there are ones which are working on uh, developing new uh, antimicrobials to tackle the issue of uh, antimicrobial resistance. Many more, many in agriculture and environmental domain as well. So how CCAM gives uh, support and what support are we giving? Uh, there are many funding opportunities. As I mentioned, we are having, uh, we are partnered with funding agencies for roughly 18 grants be it from, uh, either it can be for anyone, any entrepreneur, any stage of your development, be it ideation stage startup, mid-stage mid startups, or also the late-stage startups. We provide all supports. Uh, it can be uh, available for uh, uh, graduate, postgraduate students, for PhD scholars, and also for the seasoned researchers. Technical assistance, I showed you in the previous slides, all the state-of-the-art uh, technologies that you might require for your uh, for your research that you can access through C uh, through CCAM. You don't, have, don't you don't have to work there. You can simply send your samples from here. You can get in touch with the BD team, and uh, they can tell you how and what support they can provide for any of the technology uh, platforms. Uh, business mentorship, IP-related support that is from our team, which is a technology transfer team. Uh, regulatory guidance as well as uh, networking and connect uh, workshops that we do quite frequently. These are the specific areas where uh, CCAMP is providing support as I mentioned in the earlier slide. If it is a healthcare domain you can see antimicrobial uh, resistance. So these are the startups which are incubated in all these uh, domains. AMR, food technology, nutraceuticals, industrial biotechnology, synthetic biology, many in oncology, oncology, therapeutics, as well as uh, diagnostics, waste management. I won't go through all of these in the interest of time. Then, so far in, these, uh, in this journey of uh, more than 10 years in this, uh, startup, eco uh, in this uh, startup ecosystem, CCAMP has disbursed uh, more, than, uh, more than $12 million to these uh, startups. These are all majorly Indian startups and uh, 12 million dollars is roughly 90 crore rupees but the more important thing is not that what CCAMP is giving them if we are funding any startup we should uh, we the ideal situation will be that any 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 third person any other entity which is a it can be a angel investor or any uh, venture capitalist or anybody who find also that whether these startups are of, are of real value and if that is like a third party validation 
if they find that they are really interesting and impactful, they will also provide a funding support to that. So uh, we have, our startups have got a follow-up funding of more than $460 million in the last uh, more than a decade with a total valuation of almost $1.1 billion. Going forward, this is a, a very a snapshot of uh, different startups from different life science domains which have worked with CCAMP either through uh, a funding support, mentoring support or any other uh, activity that they would require. This is a similar slide. I will sk skip this one. We also have one program called as NBEC, that is the National Bio Biotechnology and Entrepreneurship Competition. Any individual, be it a graduate student to uh, any seasoned researcher, they can uh, apply for this uh, for this uh, uh, entrepreneurship grant if they have any innovative idea. What happens is that they will open a call. You apply with your idea. It will go through a different four to five rounds of screening. If it is uh, shortlisted and you are one of the cohort members, then you will get one-to-one -one mentoring sessions from uh, from seasoned uh, entrepreneurs and um, mentorship on IP affairs, regulatory affairs, and any any information that a newbie startup or a new entrepreneur would like to have. So far, more than 37 CR has been disembursed in terms of funding support and the cash investment, and more than 5,000 students have benefited from this program. The fifth year of this program is running. CCAM conducts very, very frequently uh, workshops and lectures on, hands-on workshops on these different technology platforms that I told you. Uh, be it mass spec, NGS, image analysis, high throughput screening, proteomics, biologics development and all. So if you follow the LinkedIn page or the Twitter page of CCAM, you will be updated that when this upcoming uh, workshop or the seminar is going to happen. These are because hands-on, so you have to fly down to Bangalore in CCAMP and uh, then you can, uh, you, can, you can get your hands on these particular work workshops. Uh, CCAMP has uh, been a winner of many uh, national entrepreneurship, uh, entrepreneurship uh, awards. For example, in, 27, in 2017, it got national award for entrepreneurship, also in 2021, national award for technology business incubator, and in 2022 as a national startup award for being an, eco an uh, startup ecosystem enabler. This is the end of the talk. There is one quick video, a five minute video, which I would uh, like to show you. This will tell you what are the activities that the C-Camp is doing. designing devices to monitor neonatal sepsis. We are focused on eliminating ICU-acquired infections. And we are working on agri-production by boosting crop health. We are CCAM, the Center for Cellular and Molecular Platforms. A unique hub enabling bioscience research, innovation and entrepreneurship at CCAM, we believe in creating synergistic partnerships and building innovations for people the world over. CCAM is committed to creating a single platform for researchers, innovators, entrepreneurs, government funding agencies, venture capitalists, institutional investors and stakeholders across all domains of the biotech industry. 
We equip our innovators with the tools, technology, and know-how needed to get started. Startups with the CCAM Edge benefit from state-of-the-art plug-and-play incubation facilities, early-stage grant and seed funding, and entrepreneurship development and mentorship programs. Life science researchers at CCAM have access to a host of analytical services and training on our technology platforms, thereby ensuring unhindered research. We see ourselves as enabler of high in science and deep science innovations, mostly to make sure that science actually comes and delivers to the societal needs. And this can happen with taking science towards the next levels of development and innovations. CCAM plays a pivotal role in taking science to that level for society as well as economic growth. CCAM is significantly leveraged as part of the Bangalore Life Sciences Cluster, a triad of scientific excellence in biological research and innovation. As a part of the cluster, CCAM is a very important element because it provides access to the enormous resources of the cluster for uh, for, for the benefit of many of the startups that CCAM incubates, uh, as well as many of the neighboring institutions and institutions across the country and the world that are able to access the uh, resources and technologies that we have developed on the cluster. Since its inception in 2009, CCAM has forged connections across India to foster research and innovation. CCAMP has delivered 3,000 plus projects with over 425 plus institutions and has supported over 180 publications. In addition, 200 plus startups have been funded, incubated, and mentored. We have over 2,000 plus connected startups in total, and close to 72 of these have received follow on funding of 772 crore rupees. We also have over 21 products at market and filed more than 180 patents. Today, CCAM startups employ more than 650 plus people. Over the past few years, CCAM has emerged as a thriving bio-innovation hub. We are recognized and awarded for our commitment and excellence, both in India and internationally. CCAM works towards connecting India with the world's innovators and leveraging global solutions to address India's specific needs. played a major role in India's response to COVID-19 through three major programs. One, CCAMP COVID-19 Innovations Deployment Accelerator, CCIDA, which identified and fast-tracked 30 deployment-ready innovations in diagnostics, preventatives, therapeutics, and vaccines. Two, National Biomedical Resources Indigenization Consortium, NBRIC, CCAMP led National Public Private Partnership to fuel indigenous biomedical technologies for COVID 19. 3. Indigenization of Diagnostics or NDX program, a Rockefeller Foundation supported initiative that is ramping up indigenous manufacturing of. COVID-19 Diagnostic Kits.
are seeking national and international partners to join us in being change makers for a better tomorrow. So that was a quick uh, briefing about uh, CCAM. I thought a uh, video will be more engaging than myself giving a boring talk. Now I would request uh, uh, Ms. Uh, Soumya, who is an IP specialist at ODT, that is Office of Technology Transfer. She will give you a briefing about uh, different aspects of uh, intellectual property. And it will be followed by one more talk from myself regarding technology transfer and what are the nuances that at least being an innovator, be it a academic or a startup, that one should be aware of. I guess it will be interesting. So, uh, Soumya, over to you. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. It is my distinct honor to introduce Soumya Rajagopal, who is an intellectual property specialist with a background in chemistry. She is a postgraduate in inorganic chemistry from Madras University. She is a law graduate registered with Bar Council of India and a registered patent agent. She was trained as a women scientist under the Kiran IPR scheme of Technology Transfer Forecasting and Assessment Council promoted by the Department of Science and Technology, Government of India. She has more than four years of experience in the domain of technology transfer, serving as the IP specialist at the Office of Technology Transfer at Center for Cellular and Molecular Platform. Earlier, she was a patent analyst for five years with a good experience in drafting, filing and prosecution of patent applications. She is pursuing a degree in law for, from Karnataka State Law University. Please join me in welcoming Swami Rajagopal to the stage for the lecture on Intellectual Property, What, Why and When. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, I am really touched with uh, seeing so many students who are all going to be the future innovators here. And I should really thank Dr. Gupta for his uh, very insightful and encouraging uh, keynote on how we can get the best entrepreneurs out of here, best scientists out of here. So now today in this session, I will walk you through what intellectual property right is about, the when, what and how could the intellectual property be registered, and how we can utilize it to the best benefit of the innovator. Now, let us start off with what is intellectual property right? So now we are all aware of uh, physical tangible properties like a house, a land, a car, a jewelry, a land. So these things are all we are, we are able to see, touch and feel these things. So these are tangible properties. Intellectual property is a form of intangible property. We are not able, we will not be able to see them or feel them. But they carry huge economic value. So intellectual property is created by human mind or human intellect. And it is an original idea from the human intellect. So these, in today's business world, the intellectual property carries huge value. Now, let us see why we should protect the intellectual property. Now, one, first we know that this property is an intangible property. Research and development is a part and parcel of the academic institutions. The result of the research is pure inventions or innovations. And the ultimate idea, idea is to translate these innovations and bring them as products and technologies to the market. Once these technologies are brought to the market, it is in public domain and any person who wants to duplicate it, can do it. So which means, it is absolutely important for the person who brings the innovation, who invents the 
idea to bank on it and hold legal rights over it. So unless we hold a legal right, it is very difficult for us to stop anybody else in duplicating it. Thus, this is one important reason why the intellectual property associated with any invention or any innovation for that matter because we will be dealing with different forms of intellectual property which do not restrict to the inventions. So, any innovator should protect the intellectual property associated with the innovation. The second one is, as I told you, research is to bring the invention, research that happens in the labs should be brought as products to the market which probably many research institutions or academic institutions from where they originate may not be able to do it all by themselves. So they may need a hand holding or a supporting or someone who could scale it up to bring it to the market. So in which case these should be licensed out so that they can be taken to the market. Unless we have a legal right over what we own we will not be able to make a legal transfer. In addition to that, as we do the legal transfer or legal licensing of the technology, it results in bringing in funds either in the form of a sponsored research or in the form of licensing fee and royalty which comes, which flows into the either the academic or the research institution which will be a very good source of revenue for the institution. So this is another important reason why the intellectual property should be associated with any of the innovation should be protected. Now I will tell you a little bit about the different types of intellectual properties. Patents, trademarks, industrial design, copyright, plant variety production, geographical indications, trade secrets and integrated circuits, circuit layout. These are all a few forms of generally known intellectual property. Now each of these is protected by specific laws, specific legislations which lays down the procedure and the guidance on how they can be protected. I will give you a brief introduction to what these different forms of IP are and what are the methods of protecting it as well as the period of protection. Patents. Patents are intellectual property rights which are granted to technical scientific inventions. So this right is given in return for the inventor disclosing the complete details of the invention to the public. So it is an exclusive right which is given to the innovator so as to practice this invention for a limited period. So the period of protection for this is around 20 years from the date of filing. For an invention to be patentable, it should be satisfying three basic conditions. The novelty condition, the inventive step condition and the industrial applicability condition. I will talk a little detail about it a little later in the session. Another important aspect that we should consider while filing for a patent is that the subject matter which is covered by the invention should be a patentable subject matter. I will again give you a briefing on this later in the session. One more important thing that should be borne in mind while filing a patent is that it should have an enablement. So what we claim as a particular invention in the patent application should be practicable. It should be anybody else who comes to know about this. As the procedure goes by, the patent application will be published. 
So people will know about the invention. So once they get to know about the invention, they should be able to practice it. And enablement is a very important requirement as far as patents are concerned. Let's move on to trademarks. What are trademarks? Some distinct word, phrase, symbol, logo, or even a tagline. So these, uh, uh, these distinct words or phrases, they help in identifying and distinguishing. They help any consumer in identifying and distinguishing the providers of goods and services one from the other. Now more importantly, any of these symbols or words, so there are different types of make, each of them will form and fall under different categories of trademark itself. So there can be a word mark, a mark, a trademark for the shape, a trademark for the logo, so all of them fall under trademarks. So this distinctly helps the consumer in identifying the providers of the goods and the services. This uh, forms a very important part of brand building, particularly for any business entity. So we all know about the Kingfisher brand. The brand name alone was sold for 60,000 crores. So which means it carries such a huge value in terms of identifying the goods and services. It is necessary for registration of the trademark to to gain the legal edge over anybody who tries to copy it. So, here it should be uh, registered and the period of protection for the trademark is 10 years from the date of registration, but of course it can be perpetually renewed. So, when we see the double golden bridge of Yam, we are immediately reminded of the McDonald's brand. Right? So, when we see the half-eaten apple, Nobody needs to ever even say that it is an apple brand, the eye, eye brand. So, it helps hugely in building the business value for the particular entity. Next form of uh, IPR is industri industrial designs. Now, here the protection is for the external appearance and aesthetic look. The aesthetic aspect of the product is protected by this. There is no protection for the functionality. The functionality will be protected only by the patent. But the form in which the, the particular product is, that itself can be protected. And here that form can be anything. It can be either the shape, the pattern, the configuration, any set of lines or figures which may be in the two-dimensional or the three-dimensional form. So here, the period of protection is again 10 years initially, which can be renewed by another 5 years. Now, uh, when we talk about industrial design, something that comes up to our mind is the shape of the Coca-Cola bottle. It was, it was a very distinct shape and the company protected it under design, as a US design, very long ago. So that way, again even today, the Tata, Tata's Nano Car, the design is protected by the industrial design, uh, the intellectual property as an industrial design. Next, let us move on to the plant variety protection. So there is also a form of intellectual property which protects the or exclusively gives rights to the breeders of plants. So plants the varieties that can be protected can be either a farmer's variety or a new, essentially derived variety, a new variety of plant itself or an extant variety which is specifically published by the government. So this intellectual property right, it is covered again by a separate legislation on Farmers Plant Variety Protection Act and this gives the farmers or the breeders of the plants exclusive right for practicing, for undertaking certain practices related to plant breeding. Now the important criteria which should be fulfilled for a plant variety to fall under this act is that it should be novel, 
it should be capable of being uh, uh, distinct, it should be distinct, it should be uniform and it should be stable even over after propagation over generations. So these form the basic criteria. Now the period of protection for this is again it will vary from uh, plant between plants. So the trees and vines are protected for 18 years while other extant varieties and other varieties are protected for 15 years. The next type of intellectual property is the geographical indication. Now this is a tag. All of us know about the GI tag. So the GI tag on a product which will it will serve to identify the product which originates from a specific geographical region. So the properties and qualities that the particular product which is covered by the GI tag is directly associated with the geographical origin of the product. So here there are different types of products which may be GI tag. So it can be either a food product like the Tripati Laddu or it can be a textile product, it can be a handicraft product, it can even be agricultural products. So these can all be covered by the GI tag. But the fact remains that it is not essential or mandatory for us to register the tag, register the geographical indication. But registration adds value to the product. So any GI tag item is better valued and it is better to market it in the international forum rather than not registering it as a GI tag. Another important aspect that we should keep in mind when talking about geographical indication is that it is a collective right which is owned by a group or an association of people who are associated who are in the geographical area. So this is a collective right. The period for protection of this right is 10 years from the date of registration which can be perpetually renewed. So, I would like to mention about two important GI tag items from the state of Punjab and Haryana. It is uh, the queen of grains that is the basmati rice and the fulkari embroidery which is a handicraft which is also a GI tag item of Punjab. Now, let me give you a briefing on the copyright. This right is associated with the literary and artistic work. The authors and creators of literary and artistic work hold special exclusive right to use, copy or duplicate their work. So they, that means anybody else who needs to be doing these activities have to have a legal license from them to practice it or to use it. The Copy, this is again protected or this is defined by a special law called the Copyrights Act. And the Copyright Act protects literary works like the books and uh, paintings, photographs, drawings, film, music, choreography, sculptures. So these are a few of the literary works, literary and artistic works which are covered under the Copyright Act. Now, the protection for this is 60 years for, for a published literary work. It is 60 years after the death of the author or it is 60 years from the time when the work with respect to the cinematic and photographic work, it will be 60 years from the time when the work was declared or available to the public. Now that I gave you an overview of the different possible types of intellectual property. Let's see how. I'll give you an example. Wherein one particular product is covered by more than one type of IP. For example, if we take the iPhone, the data processing and the functional features of the iPhone are covered by the patent, which, is, which, which, are, which will fall under the invention part or the technical part of the product. Now the third apple, the iPhone, the logo of the iPhone, the software, iOS software, 
These are all protected by the trademark. If we see, look at the form, physical appearance of the phone, the rounded shape, the way in which the icons are arranged, the for, uh, arrangement of the buttons, these are all aesthetic, the uh, external appearance. These are all protected under the Designs Act. Now, the software code, the instruction manual which comes along with the phone for how to use the phone and the ringtone, these are all protected under the copyright. Thus, one single product is covered by more than one type of IP, which means it adds more and more value to the product in the market. So that is why iPhones are very costly. They, they have all the uh, uh, different types of intellectual properties integrated into one device. So which gives you more security and protection. Now, so for that matter, even this, the slides that are on the screen are all copyright protected. So such is the importance of protecting the intellectual property associated with any of the innovations, any of the, uh, any, any invention, anything that is associated with being created. So all these things, it is important for us to protect it in the form of intellectual property. Now let me give you a little more or tell, talk a little more in detail about inventions which mainly come from the labs and which are protected under the patents. Now, what is a patent in technical terms? So, a patent is an intellectual property right which is given for a technical invention. Okay? And again, as I told you, it is for a period of 20 years and it gives monopolistic rights to the patent holder for making, using, uh, importing these inventions and holding rights over them for the period for which they hold the exclusive right. Now the patents can be for either a new product or a process for making it and in some jurisdiction even the new, the, not even the new, the use of a particular product for more than one purpose that can also be patented. Of course it is not patented in India but it is possible to patent it in some other jurisdictions like Europe. Now. What does it give? It gives the patentee the exclusive right to uh, make use of the invention, to practice the invention. So, again, it prevents, it also gives the right for the patentee to prevent others from doing these things. So, which means it is a doubly, it is doubly advantageous for the patentee. One in protecting his own rights, another one is to preventing others from doing it. So these are the twofold rights that is given. One more important aspect that we should keep in mind is that patents are all territorial in nature. That means if we have a patent for a particular technical invention, we in India, we will not be protected. We cannot protect that technology if we want to use this invention in another country. Say for example, the US. So, that is why we have to definitely bear in mind that it is a territorial in nature. There is nothing called an international patent. A patent is filed in one country, followed by which, I will tell you the procedure, we can protect it in multiple countries, but protection in each country is necessary. So, if we have a patent in India, we cannot practice the patent in China or US or Europe. So, we need to have Special rights for practicing it in each of the territories. Now, let us talk a little on the criteria for patentability. So, what are the important conditions that should be fulfilled for an invention to be able to be patented? First is, it should be a new process or a product, completely new in the sense that it should not have been anticipated or published in any public forum until the day when it is filed as a patent. So that means that novelty is the first criteria for an invention to be patented. Second, the inventive step. So what is the inventive step? The subject matter for which we want to have a patent 
should not, it should have a specific technical advantage. It's not a, a simple workshop improvement. No, that will not qualify for being a patent. There should be something inventive about it. That means there should be a technical advancement over what is already existing in the public with respect to that field of invention. So, and again, a person who is practicing in the particular field, field of invention should not be, this subject matter should not be obvious to that person. That means he should not know the solution that is offered by a particular invention beforehand, which means it will not qualify for the inventorship criteria. So, second important condition for any technical invention to be patented is that it should be a it should have an inventive step. The third one is the industrial applicability. So any invention which has an invent which is being capable of being made in an industry or practiced in an industry, then alone it can qualify as a patent. Industry can include agricultural sector also. So when these three basic criteria are satisfied, the invention can move to the level of getting grant. The next question comes, why should we file for a patent? So anybody who has an invention, in being in academic environment, we are always oriented towards publishing a paper on what research is being done. But the importance of Patenting comes here. So when you have an inventive idea or an invention in hand, so we have two options to take. One is to publish it, practice the invention, make a product and bring it to the market. The second option is to protect it as a patent and then later on license it or bring it to the market either by practicing or licensing it to any larger entity and then bring the product. So, if the first option is exercised, what happens is the invention is in the public. Anybody in the public will be capable of duplicating it. We cannot prevent it. But however, if we are able to protect it as a patent, so what happens is a legal use of the patented idea cannot be done unless and until we secure our IPR as a patent. And once it is patented, it will definitely bring in more revenue and also help in bringing out more research or help the research institution or academic institution to further its researching activities. So this way it is imperative for us to protect it and take the second option of protecting it before publishing the idea. So the motto should always be protect your idea as a patent your invention or the technical idea as a patent and then publish it. Of course, there are a few uh, clauses in our patent law wherein there is a period of uh, wherein even after publishing we can patent the idea but it's always right for us to do the patenting before publishing the invention. Now the Indian Patent Act spells out uh, in detail on how the patenting procedure should happen. It also gives a few conditions on the subject matter which will not fall under the patenting purview in India. So this is spelled out in section 3 of the Indian Patent Act. So the any frivolous invention, for example, a device to housebreak, a device to make a fake note. So these are all frivolous, they are fraud. You cannot do these things. So this will go against the public order or morality. So this invention cannot be patented. If we simply discover something that is already there in nature, some scientific principle or some organism or a living or a non-living thing which already is existing in nature, then it cannot be patented. Now, section 3D is a very important section of uh, Indian Patent Act which says that a new form, a new use, new property of a known substance should not fall under the patentable subject matter. So here, uh, there is a very famous uh, legal case of uh, 
a huge pharma company called Mamatus, which had a legal battle with the Union of India, wherein a patent which was filed by the pharmaceutical company was refused by the Indian Patent Office based on this 3D section. Just because they came up with a new form of the substance which did not show any significant increase in the therapeutic, therapeutic efficacy. So the patent office said, no, this is not qualified as a patent or a patentable subject matter. Now, another important uh, section of uh, Indian Patent Act is the admixture, a mere admixture, section 3E, which says that a mere admixture of two or more substances which will retain their original property. That will not be a subject matter of a patent. That cannot form the subject matter of a patent. Again, mere arrangement, rearrangement or duplication of known devices which will perform their individual functions. If you have a fan attached with a light, both the fan and the light having the same, doing the same job. So such simple inventions, they will not be falling under a patentable subject matter under the Indian Patent Act. Now, second, then, Section 3F says that the method of agriculture or horticulture is non-patentable in India. A method of diagnosis or treatment of human beings or plants and animals in whole or, the, or part thereof, these cannot be normal biological process for reproduction these things will not fall under patentable subject matter in India. That means we cannot protect a method of vaccination. We cannot protect some seeds, some varieties of plants. So these are all occurring in nature. They are all parts of human, parts of the plants. So these will not fall under patentable subject matter. Business or mathematical methods and then uh, mere scheme and rule of, uh, uh, mere scheme, rule or method of performing an art or a presentation of information, these things are also non-patentable subject matter in India. Now, the literary, musical, artistic work will all fall under the Copyright Act. Again, so they will not be patentable. Now, we know about a few, uh, and some knowledge such as, uh, that will be traditionally handed down from generation to generation. Say, for example, the use of neem or turmeric as an antiseptic, which we have been knowing from long ago, these will fall under the traditional knowledge and do not form any part of patentable subject matter in India. So, now we come to a part wherein we know that what are the criteria that should be fulfilled for a technical invention to be patented and what will be the subject matter which will fall outside the purview of patenting in India. Now, let me give you a brief of how generally the procedure for patenting goes in India. Now we have an inventive concept uh, or a technology. So what do we do? We can write a detailed description of it along with all details of who will, who are the inventors, who will be the applicant and all that and submit it in the form of an invention disclosure form to a registered patent attorney. So these are, those are the people who will deal or who will liaise between the inventor and the Indian Patent Office for getting you the rights over the invention. So now once the invention disclosure form is submitted, the attorney walks you through the drafting and filing procedure in India and follows up with the prosecution of the application until the invention is <coughs> invention gets a, a grant, patent granted. Now after the granting of the patent, the patent needs to be maintained periodically, annuities should be paid. And then a working statement on the, of the patent should be submitted to the Indian Patent Office periodically. Every year we have to submit uh, a report to the Patent Office saying that whether the invention has been worked in India or not. So this is how the procedure generally goes with Indian Patent Office. Now to let you know about the timelines for obtaining patents. Now, we once the idea is filed in the form of provisional application, so there are two types of applications that can be submitted. One is a provisional application which gives you the priority date, when the date at which the first application for the invention is filed with the Indian Patent Office. Then there is a gap of 12 months by when you can accumulate all the data, enable all the claims that we have and then file a complete specification in the Indian Patent Office. 
this will be followed by publication of the applica application by the patent office. So the invention will be disclosed to the public after 18 months of filing. Where after that, we have to submit a request for examination to the controller for the application to be examined under the Indian patent law. After which, uh, first examination report is dispatched to the applicant. After responding to that applicant, after responding to the first examination report, the controller may decide on holding a hearing over the patent application and then deciding on whether to grant the application or otherwise. In the meantime, even as the application is published, there may be people in the public who would object to the patent application, the subject matter which is applied for. So there, there will be a, there can be a pre-grant opposition which is again taken up through a legal procedure of notification of the involved party followed by hearing and decision making by the controller. Then they, it will be taken up for grant by the controller. After the grant, after the controller decides to grant the application, the grant is published. So after the publication of the grant, the uh, patent is where the Indian Patent Office issues a patent certificate which, which completely describes the, uh, the owners and the applicant of the particular patent application. So that means the patentee or the, pa the person who applies for the patent, who gets the patent is called a patentee. So the patentee is entitled to legal rights over the patent for a period of 20 years from the date on which he is applying for the patent until 20 years when the rights cease. So only for 20 years they can practice it exclusively. Beyond that it goes into the public domain. Now, even after the grant of the patent there may be a post grant opposition which can be filed by companies or entities who are into the field of invention. So again that is also prosecuted. Based on the result or the decision of the controller, the patent is either uh, re revoked or it is reinstated. So that is the procedure, general procedure with a timeline. So the government of India has come up with uh, a number of uh, different, a number of uh, what do you call, benefits for the academic and startups because they want to promote innovation in India. So what are the benefits? First, they have uh, drastically slashed the official filing fee for academia and startup. Previously, we used to have a different set of uh, conditions for small entities and in, uh, in individuals and large entities. Now, all has been slashed and there, is, there are just two slabs. One is for the individual, the academia, the startup and small entities. And another is for the large entities, that is big companies. So, the startup, the fees for filing a simple patent application in India is just 1,600 rupees. It is the official fee. So, this way they want to bring more and more innovations to get patented so that the intellectual property is protected. Secondly, they are also giving huge benefit for women <coughs> applicants in the patent. When there is a women applicant in the patent, they are also given a lot of fee concession. Now, thirdly, uh, there is a possibility for early publication. As I told you, generally there is there are 18 months from the date of filing, we have to, uh, the application is published. But now, there is a possibility for us to file an early publication and expedite the examination of the patent application so that the patent is granted in the earliest possible time. So, if we take this expedited route, it is possible that we can get a patent within 12 to 15 months from the date of filing. So, this is a very big, huge benefit for the academia and the startup because the when the idea or the invention is protected as a patent, it adds huge value to the valuation of the company or the invention, valuation of the invention, even when we go for sponsorship research or partnership with any industrial entity. 
So this benefit should definitely be reaped by the academic environment here. Now in addition to, as I told you, patents are territorial in nature. So in addition to filing for a patent in India, we can also have applications filed for the same subject matter taking priority from the initial patent application in any other country. So there are two different routes of taking it. One is filing a convention application, Paris convention application, which is filed 12 months from the date of first filing. So you can file in different countries uh, based on the first priority application. The second one is a PCT route, Patent Cooperation Treaty. Under this, an application can be filed again within a period of 12 months from the first filing. And this application secures the priority of the application in more than 157 countries. So, in, in uh, corresponding national phase applications can be filed in any of the 157 countries from 30 to 31 months from the priority date. So, this gives the inventor huge time to assess the market for his invention. So, this is a very major benefit that anybody gets when filing the PCT application. Additionally, when the PCT application is filed with the World Intellectual Property Organization, WIPO as it is very commonly called, so the, they issue a initial patentability assessment on that. That means how good, how patentable is your invention. So a written opinion on that is given by the WIPO. Secondly, it also gives an international search report on what are the other technologies, relevant technologies which are in this field of invention. So this also goes a long way in addressing the inventor's uh, assess, inventor, in assessing his invention and then taking his invention to any country of his interest within a period of 30 to 31 months. So this gives him the time and this is the biggest advantage that he can have before filing for the same application subject matter in any other country. Now let me give you a briefing on how we as the Office of Technology Transfer help in protecting the invention or protecting your IP. So we are engaged with number of uh, academic institution and research organization. We have uh, sessions with them, we have meetings, regular meetings with the inventors and try to understand what are the possible inventions that may come out of the research. So the invention harvesting can be, will be done by our team. So this will help them in filing the patents for those things. Once the inventive concept, once we identify them, then we also help them in assessing whether those inventive co concepts are patent, patentable under the Indian Act. So the patentability assessment is done by our team. We also help them in drafting and filing of patent applications, not only patents, any type of copyright, trademark, industrial designs. So all forms of IP, our team, we have a team of experts who can coordinate and file for the different types of IP. In addition to this, we are also conducting periodic IP clinics wherein we will have individual sessions with the startups and inventors and try to find their specific query, what is the specific hurdle that they face or what is the specific idea uh, that they want for filing different types of IP. What can be the IP strategy that they can take. So these type of advices as mentors, we give them advice on IP, strat IP filing strategy. And then we also periodically have this IP sponsorship call wherein we call for applications for new inventions and we subject uh, we screen it for uh, eligibility and then those inventions which are eligible and which qualify for this are filed under very very subsidized rate so these uh, inventions these patent application the filing can be done either for indian application or even for a pct so we try to fund their official fee and file these applications at highly subsidized rate. So these are the few uh, ways in which our, we as Office of Technology Transfer assist in IP. 
So now uh, I think I have given you a overview of what the different types of IP and how the IP can be protected in India and how we as Office of Technology Transfer assist you with this. So I think uh, the floor is now open for questions. You may please ask what you want. And if you have any queries on IP filing and related issues, please write to us at ottthcamp.res.in and we will be more than happy to get any type of solutions for your problems. Thank you. So, Thank you so much, ma'am, for this wonderful lecture. Now, let us welcome Dr. Chetan Chandola for his talk on technology commercialization, understanding the nuances. Thank you, all the students, particularly for braving through three talks back to back. And to test your patience, I'm going to give you one more, OK? After that, you can go wherever you want. May I know uh, how many students, you may raise your hands, uh, how many students are at the graduation level? Okay, almost like 80, 90 percent. Uh, how many are doing masters or PhD? Okay, and how many are in PhD or they want to do PhD? Only, okay, very brave students are also here, I can see that. Very well motivated. So I, want, I, I was asking this because I will tune in my conversation accordingly, okay? So, and I will have certain questions, so I make sure that you are not getting bored, okay? So you are attentive. Uh, so I will throw some questions. And uh, how many of you have heard about uh, technology licensing or technology commercialization? I, just, I don't want to know any definition, but just any of this keyword. Have you heard the word licensing? I am not asking about Microsoft license that you install in your in your laptop. Technology licensing. Have you heard? Uh, quite few. Okay. So, uh, Soumya talked about uh, IP, which is uh, one of the backbones of technology licensing. Without, if you don't have an IP, it is. Still, there can be tech transfer and licensing, but IP is one of the key components and backbones of whenever we talk about technology licensing, and I will discuss about it. So, the, as you can see, the talk is here is technology commercialization, understanding the nuances. I will tell you that what is uh, technology commercialization or technology transfer or technology licensing. These are more or less the same uh, the same words. They are like synonyms, almost. Uh, what is this? Why do we need to do this? And how we do this? You don't have to be an expert when you go back after this 30 minute talk. Uh, but the idea is to give you a flavor that what it is all about. And just in case, if you develop any technology like the excellent work that Dr. Naveen is doing, uh, then uh, what happens then when you are interacting with the industry, uh, there are certain keywords that you should be uh, aware of when you are doing any negotiation or you are discussing about licensing out your technology to that company. So this is what it is all about. I will begin with this. So the first and basic question is that why do you why do we even have to do the uh, technology uh, licensing. Dr. Naveen focused on this and I also uh, discussed this in my previous talk that without any fundamental research, without any basic research, which is, the, which is the backbone, there can be never be any product development or any tech development or any tech transfer or tech licensing for that matter. So whatever we are talking about here in this talk is or relevant to translational research or the product development or technology development part, not the basic research. So we don't want to undermine that at any cost. The How it goes is that, okay, you are a researcher, you could be a BSc, MSc student, or you may be working in any startup, or you may be having your own startup, if you want to have. You're doing some research, and you invest your a good amount of time, your good sleep, which you would you deserve, 
and uh, a lot of money. Not like Dr. Naveen, he has done wonders with very less amount of money, so that is a very exceptional case, great. But a good amount of time and money can go into research if you are doing product or technology development. And in the end, if you are, if you are fortunate, you will have the relevant product or the technology. When I say product technology, it could be like anything. It can be a software that you are making, okay, any application. It can be an antibody. If you are a pharma student, it can be a formulation or any novel drug molecule. If you are working in diagnostic space, it can be a new diagnostic device. Take, for example, during a COVID pandemic, uh, these uh, different uh, diagnostic kits were there. They were like essential. Many of them were made by the companies themselves. Some of them uh, were translated from academic labs to other companies. So that is why it happens. That is how it happens. So if this technology, there are two scenarios, either they reach the market or they don't reach the market for whatever reason there may be. If it does not reach the market, that the entire effort and time that you have put in is considered wasted, which we don't want. And if, if it reaches the market, though I have written the word revenue here, which I should replace in my next presentation, it should be like a you know, societal impact oblique revenue. If it comes to the market, that means it reaches the relevant people, relevant population that needs this. So there will be a decent amount of very great societal impact and there will be some revenue. The revenue which might come, it can go into whatever vertical, it can be sent back into doing further R&D because uh, innovation and product development is a, is a is a forever process. You can never say that, okay, I made this kit, this is the best and then it, knows it needs no further improvement. Because every technology in the world will be replaced eventually by the other technology if it doesn't keep pace with the development. So the revenue might go back into your core R&D team or for whatever, what I mean, you can also buy a car if you are a owner of that, uh, of that startup, uh, if you get some good revenue, okay, whatever. That's not mandatory. So when we talk about licensing a technology from, uh, from, from an inventor to any other company, there are two keywords that I want you to remember. Uh, one is that how you can do that is that the IP, intellectual property, uh, Samya was talking about the IP in the previous, in the previous uh, presentation. The IP that you have, you can either sell it, literally sell it, to any other company which might be interested in your technology. Uh, I, will, uh, I will take cases from uh, previous talk by Dr. Praveen so that you are more, it is more relevant. He was talking about that like his enzyme which has application in the industry. In the industry. So just an example, okay, not like he is going to do like that, I don't know. So that he can sell that technology, literally sell to an interested industry partner as a one-time payment and that it is called as IP rights assignment. He is assigning his IP to the industry and it is like literally selling your IP. It is a transfer of ownership of your patent. It is like you have a car and you sell your car to somebody else. Once you sell it, literally, you have no right over it. He can use your car, he can sell it, he can break it or he can rent it to anybody else, it is the choice of the uh, licensee, the person, the company that it is taken. And it is a single time, and it is a single time uh, transaction. On the other hand, the better and a smarter way of getting a revenue or the impact is that licensing. Instead of assigning your, your IP rights, you are licensing your technology to somebody else. And here, the unique and most important thing is that you are not transferring the ownership of that patent or the technology to the other entity. You are still the owner of the technology. What you do is, you tell him, okay, you take this technology, and in, in, in return, you give me some amount of money, because I have spent like a good amount of money and time over it, and of course you are going to make revenue over it, and you give me money in multiple transactions, unlike one-time transaction in IP assignment. So that is the word. IP assignment and IP uh, license. That is how they differ. Throughout the talk, I will use these two keywords 
licensor and the licensee. The licensor is the inventor. It can be academic researcher, startup, anybody who has developed the technology. He is the giver. He gives the technology. The one who receives is the licensee. He receives the technology. In return, he gives the money to the person or to the startup or a inventor that has made the technology. So the licensor and the licensee keep this in mind and it will be repeated throughout the presentation. The point is that uh, why are we doing the technology licensing? The first thing I think if I ask a question uh, to anyone or you ask with anyone, why are we doing is uh, the first and obvious answer is that okay, it will give some revenue. It will give me a good amount of money. Okay, I can do whatever with that. I can do further research or I can buy something for myself for the hard work that I have done. That is only one component of it. There are other uh, things also involved. Of course, one is the revenue generation. The other uh, thing, if you think from a broader perspective, is raising investment. How can one get investment by licensing is that? Suppose if I'm a company, a big company or whatever, or maybe so take for example, I'm an inventor, I, del I, I, I have uh, a technology, I have a simple fan, that's it. That is a technology as a little, little startup that I have. I came to know, how many of you uh, know about HIPAA filters? Very common, have you heard? Okay, they are in every single AC nowadays. If you are in a microbial, if you are a microbio student, you will be having a lab, uh, lab hood, right? It is there in every single uh, cell culture hood. So I go to this inventor and I tell him, okay, okay, I, I know that you have made a HEPA filter. You give me this for X amount of money. I get it as an industry. Now if I, if I integrate this HEPA filter into the, into the fan, that I already have, my market will become much bigger. Why? Because a fan, a regular fan, you can put it on a ceiling or on a wall if it is too hot, but I, if I integrate HEPA filter with a fan, I have, I can, I can put it in an AC, I can put it in a clean room if I want. There are many, if you go to uh, units where there is a, where people make uh, microfabrication uh, chips, or chips, uh, integrated circuits in the software industry. Uh, for particularly for uh, nowadays, these uh, these uh, you know these uh, air purifiers are very common. So you open up your market, okay, by integrating the new technology. Now this is a reality as a as a startup, even by licensing this technology from any 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 academic lab. I may not make you know hundred thousand pieces of these air purifiers. So, so what I will do is, after taking this uh, licensing this technology, I will go to a venture capital and I will tell him, I have technology X, I have now licensed technology Y from one inventor, and now I have access to five more markets, which is which for which I was not having any access earlier as a fan only. So now you give me $10 million so that I can scale up. So that is why I have written the word investment. If you integrate one new technology to your existing technology, you can raise investment because you have now access to a bigger and a better niche market. Second thing is a technical component that why we do licensing. I just, uh, it is already covered in the previous example that I gave, upgrading technology, A plus B, I add a HIPAA filter to my fan, so I have upgraded my technology, which was earlier only a fan, with a limited use. Exchange of technology. There is no big company in the world which can do anything and everything under the sun. Particularly big companies, they very commonly, they do exchange of technology when it becomes to better, I mean bigger and more challenging problems. For example, our companies like uh, like uh, Apple and Microsoft, it might like like their enemies, but uh, they are very quick, frequently exchanging technologies with each other, so that they have access to uh, a larger audience to whom they want to serve. So that is 
uh, exchange of technology. You can give your technology for free without for not for any revenue to somebody, and in exchange you tell them, I'm giving you this. You give me the complementary technology. So it is called as uh, exchange of technology, also called as cross licensing, in a in a more specific language. These are almost uh, seven steps of technology commercialization. Very quickly, I will go through these. Somia has covered some of the aspects, so I will not take much time. The first step is innovation as an inventor. You do something, then you, after the invention is done, you go to any patent agent or a patent attorney, or if there is any technology transfer office in your organization, you go to them and you tell them, I have done, a suppose, I made this a clone. I think it has some therapeutic use. It can be used for treating any disease X. Do you think it is a novel invention? So this step is called as invention disclosure. They will give you a form which is known as IDF, invention disclosure form. In the form they will ask you to write the details of what you have done. What is a novelty? What you think is? Is there and what is the applicability? and is it having any market uh, commercial pro prospect. You will fill out the form and you will send it back to that tech transfer office or to the patent agent. They will evaluate the form, which is the idea form that you have submitted. And uh, if they find it is uh, fulfilling all the criteria of patent filing, they will go for patent protection. That means they will write the final draft of that party for that uh, for that uh, clone or the technology that you have developed. And uh, then we go for, once you have uh, filed a patent, then you can start identifying who are the potential companies to whom you can sell your technology or license out your technology. Am I, um, are you following on, I mean, am I, uh, am I clear on this until now? I think it's not, as complicated as the molecular biology lectures that you will be taking every day. So it's very simple. Uh, once uh, you, if you identify any potential uh, company, uh, uh, I mean they can then further go for further scale up or product development and eventually they will give you some revenue back for the technology that they have taken. I will very quickly go through them very fast in detail. Innovation, I already covered this, you do innovation and then you disclose, I mentioned this. Only uh, important thing uh, that I must uh, highlight here is that many of you are graduate students here. If you are doing any research and you with the objective that you want to file a patent, you should be aware of the fact that before filing of that technology, you should not put it in public domain. Okay, that is something very basic but uh, it is important that we highlight that again. And when I say not to put them in a public domain, as academic researchers, we, the first thing that we do is we love to publicize our work, which is of course mandated and important and required at different uh, levels. For example, in a, as a poster presentation, maybe as a talk and as a paper presentation, I mean, as, a, uh, as a publications eventually. If you want to file a patent, make sure that the key information you are not putting in a public domain because anything and everything which is there in a public domain can never ever be patented. It doesn't matter even if it is you are the inventor and you publish it in a poster presentation yesterday and today you go to a patent office and they say, I want to, I want to uh, file, it, uh, file a patent, they will not allow you because uh, work in a, in a public domain will be called as prior art. And before any patent uh, filing, a thorough prior art search is done, they will take down your information that you have published somewhere, or if somebody else finds out, finds out okay, uh, and, the prior, and the patent office comes to know this, then your work will be considered as public information. Doesn't matter, even if you did it. So, they will do the evaluation. I mentioned about this. I won't go through the details that, you know, there is a patentable and non-patentable subject matter. Soumya has already gone through that in, uh, in detail. I will skip this in the interest of time. 
one important thing is that any patent which is, uh, which is to be filed, they also have to be commercially viable. We have to tell that why this technology is of commercial use and who is going to use it. Without that, it will be challenging to file any patent. I mean, that is why we are filing a patent. The very premise of filing a patent is that I feel that this work, this technology has some commercial potential and uh, I don't want anybody else to take an undue advantage of that commercial potential without my permission. So if a technology is not having any commercial potential, then what is the point in filing a patent? That's why you have to highlight that it is really having a commercial potential. Uh, again, uh, so when you, again I will skip this very quickly, superficially I will explain, you can file either a provisional patent or a non-provisional patent for your, uh, for your technology. Provisional you can file when you want to, when you don't have enough of data, but you have very basic amount of data which is good enough to support your claims and the scope of your application, okay? If I say, I have made a clone which will make a therapeutic protein, and this protein can help me in preventing uh, sepsis or antimicrobial resistance. But I don't have all the data. I have only very basic in vitro label data for really generating, so I can, with this, data, with this little data, I can file a provisional patent. But within 12 months of this provisional filing, I should go for a complete filing. And uh, that means they will ask you for more data. I have to show them more data, means like an in vivo data, toxicity data, whatever data that may like to have. <clears throat> then you can, uh, after the provisional, the next step is go for international application through the PCT route, or the other option is, PCT route is generally recommended if you want to file a patent in many countries. Suppose, I think uh, I made a drug for treating uh, dengue. Dengue is a tropic, is a disease, is a problem in uh, tropical countries. So, in uh, all through the India, uh, Africa, South America, Southeast Asia, I think there is a market. I can file patent for 20 different countries. So, it is easy that you go for the PCD application first and then you go for uh, national phase filing. That is the second step of uh, PCD uh, for, for a patent filing. But if you think that you're working on a technology which is having a limited scope in limited countries, or for whatever reason you don't want to file in 20 different countries, you just want to file in one, two or three countries, then you don't have to go for a PCT route. You will just file your Indian complete patent application, and in a limited time, that means 12 months from date of priority, that means date of your either complete or provisional filing, you should go for a convention application in that unique country, be it America, Japan, China, Russia, whatever you feel your market is. Now, you file your patent, and uh, being an academic in inventor, you know that the one thing you can do very good is innovation, exploration, technology development, making new products, and uh, you have n number of, infinite number of ideas. Uh, so naturally you don't want to go for scale up. And uh, going for scale up and, you know, direct to market is its uh, own, uh, has a, it, it, need, it has its own set of, uh, uh, it needs its own set of unique expertise. So you go and you find a company which is ready to invest their time and energy into the product that you have developed. Say for example, any therapeutic molecule. You say, okay, I made this molecule, it can, uh, it can uh, treat cancer, or it can prevent the expansion of cancer in the body. So you start finding the relevant company. Now, can you tell me, uh, this question is to all the students, what do you feel, at what stage should you start marketing the technology that you have. I just gave you an example of therapeutic drug. It can be actually anything. Uh, any idea on that? Uh, what do you think at what stage? Anybody can raise your hand. 
what stage do you feel you should start marketing your technology? That means when do you think you should start finding out which are the companies that should uh, take your technology? After the publication. Okay. Okay. After I suppose publication or after uh, filing of your uh, of your patent. Any other thoughts on that? Any right or wrong answer will do. After approval of patent. Okay. So the answer is that you should start finding a relevant industry partner for your technology from the day you think about this idea. Okay. Now there is a catch here. I have written it at step number five because somewhere I have to put it. Okay. Not that it is literally step number five. There is a catch here. Finding a relevant industry partner does not mean you go and tell them everything and anything that you have done. Tell them what is your formulation, tell them what is your clone, what is the sequence. It is not like that. By marketing at least, you have to start finding the relevant stakeholders and at least talk to them. Okay? Because many a times what might happen is that they will tell you, okay, this, you know, this, I don't think, uh, I mean, you have, to, you have to get their perspective also. As not as academic researcher, we may not be so aware of what is the what is there required in the market. That person uh, may say, "Okay, you are making a air purifier. Do you know there are 20 companies already in India, and nobody will be interested in this technology? Then better you don't work on that. You work on some something else, which is relevant on a problem which has to be solved. A problem on which." already 20 companies are working and it has been solved, suppose that uh, nobody is going to uh, license out. So talking to companies, marketing and technology means getting the other perspective, what they think about this. I am working suppose on a clone for, I made one biologic or biosimilar for, uh, for uh, oncology, for suppose uh, NSCLC or uh, basal cell carcinoma, any, any cancer. But they will say, I think, uh, uh, I think, uh, you know, uh, this strategy will not fit. Maybe they feel that certain sort of molecules are not viable for this, uh, for this, uh, for example, uh, uh, immune, uh, immune, uh, sorry, uh, immune check, mob, uh, immune check, po checkpoint uh, inhibitors are not suitable for for uh, cold tumors. Cold tumors are the ones for which, uh, uh, which uh, I mean, for which this uh, solution is not viable. The idea here is to get their perspective, what they think, because eventually it is only them as an innovator whom you are going to talk to and out license their technology. So better to connect with them sooner in your journey than going and talk to them in the very end and to get a realist, to get a, a reality check. Licensing is always uh, always uh, territory specific and it has limited time frames. That means if I give my technology, my IP license out to any company, uh, for example, I can give my AI purifier technology to one company in India, but to another company in America. Why? Why will I do that? Any idea? Because manufacturing in America, they manufacturing there. Yeah, that is true. I mean, uh, there could be many answers for that. That could be one of the answers. So, uh, maybe one reason is that, you know, the company whom I'm giving the technology in India it has no, I mean, it is only in India. They have no reach in America. So if I want to get, if I want my product to be sold in 20 different countries, I should reach out to a company which is already working in, in 20 con countries. I cannot give it to somebody in Delhi and who is working only in North India and expect him to sell in America also. Or for that matter, sell him to Chennai. That expectation is wrong. So we have to, but for that matter, you can put a clause in your agreement that, okay, I know your access is only in this territory, your network is not very wide, 
I want to give you only license for India, but not for America or Japan or anywhere else. So that's just one point. The time frame is usually the life of the patent. So that is quite obvious. After the patent life is gone, then uh, there is no point in giving a, uh, I mean, uh, then there is no point of having a license, right? So when we talk about, the, so, so when you talk to somebody regarding, uh, if you find, uh, if you're lucky enough that your technology is great, you found a great partner, a very good company with global reach, like Dr. Naveen was talking about one company, again I will not take the name, he took the name, okay? And uh, then they will give you one document to fill in, where all the terms and conditions, preliminary terms and conditions they will write down. Uh, what those terms and conditions, that document is called as term sheet. That means terms and conditions are there. What are those terms and conditions? That is what this slide is all about. The one uh, first thing they will uh, ask the inventor or the inventor will tell them is that we want to give you an exclusive or a non-exclusive license. Exclusive means other than you, no other company in the world I will just give technology to. Both exclusive and non-exclusive have their own uh, benefits. Exclusive is because you have to, if they have to give you money, you don't have to go and chase 100 different companies. You are, you are just dealing with one person. It might sound very simple, but it can really take you for a ride. They won't always give you the money, so simply. Not always, so it depends whom you are dealing with. Non-exclusive license you can give usually for a, com uh, to, for a technology which is a platform technology in nature. What is a platform technology? Any technology uh, you are licensed students, uh, many of you would have heard about CRISPR technology, right? How many of you? Okay, almost, okay, many of you. So CRISPR technology is a platform technology, it is a gene editing technology, right? Any company in agriculture, in therapeutics, in diagnostics, somebody working on environment surveillance, it has application in n number of fields. Now there is not any one company in the world which is working on every single domain. Agri, animal science, husbandry, veterinary, therapeutics, diagnostics, in therapeutics also, vaccines, you know, immune checkpoint inhibitors and what not. There is no other, not any single company. So if you are working, if you have a technology which is like a platform technology, you have to make sure that you are giving a non-exclusive license or a exclusive license for an exclusive use. You know I am giving CRISPR technology to this agri company. They can never make vaccines, not they are mandated. So let me give them a non-exclusive license or exclusive license only for agri domain. Company which is making vaccines will usually not make uh, uh, make uh, usually not necessarily an enzyme. So let me give a, give them this uh, CRISPR technology for making only this vaccine, but not any functional enzyme. So depending on the entity you are dealing with, dealing with, you can give a non-exclusive or exclusive license. Territory I explained you. These licenses are territory specific. You give them permission to license only in India or U.S., China, whatever, or global license, if it is a big company. Don't expect a company which is only in your city or town that it can, you know, there's no point in giving them global license. They don't have access to any other market. Having said and done all that, it comes to the payment fees. Naturally, for the hard work that you have done and the time that you have spent, you deserve some, some money in your institute also. So, usually for, I mean, for, uh, on, uh, the, these are standard terms and conditions. Payment is, uh, there. these are in uh, three different steps. One is license fees, okay. I made this, uh, this, uh, uh, this uh, clone which can make this uh, functional gene, gene. Take for example the case of Dr. Naveen Lekke's enzyme I made, okay. I told them you can use it for, uh, for bleaching in the temporary industry or textile industry, you give me a upfront signing fees first. This can be X amount, suppose 10 lakh, 1 lakh, whatever. And after that, because I have to remember, being an academician, 
or academic or early stage inventor, this technology might not be market ready. As he mentioned, he gave the example and that why the tender industry is not using the uh, particular that uh, enzyme throughout the year. They said, Sari, kabhi kaam karta hai, kabhi kaam nahi karta hai. So, that means if I give my technology to some, any industry and if they have to work upon on that technology to literally make it market ready, they also have to spend some time and money on that and uh, they might do prototype development after they're taking your technology and then regulatory approvals. If it is a micro bill thing, so probably you will have to get a permission from some regulatory uh, authority. I have written clinical trials in case if it is a therapeutic molecule uh, and then market entry. That means really when the technology is there in the commercial use. So when that licensee, that company is going through all these successful steps one by one, they have to give you a certain amount of money in different batches. And for the, uh, finally royalty, uh, you will get. Uh, the royalty is uh, very, it depends from industry to industry. There are certain royalty standards. If you see therapeutic industry, pharma industry, if I license any drug molecule, any vaccine, biologics, anything for, for therapeutic use, the royalty that an inventor gets usually is 2 to 3 percent. Because 2 to 3 percent royalty in therapeutic sector could be quite a decent amount. And the reason is the royalties are low there is because industry has to spend a hell lot of money for clinical trials which can run in like billions of dollars for, for the clinical trials. So that is why the royalty margins in therapeutic industry is low, 2 to 3 percent. In gaming industry, it is very high. It can go from 50 to 20 percent. When it comes to diagnostics, medical devices, it can be from 6 to 10 percent. So you can stick to the market standards and there can be a minimum annual royalty. That means you say, okay, at least this much amount of money you have to give me every year. This is the minimum that I'm expecting. They can also do sub-licensing. And there can be clawback terms if they are not giving you any money or if they have just taken your technology, but they are not working on it. They're not diligently working on it. It looks like they have no intent of bringing it to the market. Then it is a waste of time and effort for the inventor that he has done because his ultimate aim is the societal benefit, the technology entering the market. In that case, the clawback terms can be activated so they are not reaching the milestones or they are not or their payment disputes, then you can cancel the agreement. So these are the points that you should remember within any term sheet that you will be having. I will skip this in the interest of time, compulsory license. This is, uh, I will skip this, we don't have time for this. This is one, uh, one example of, I will try to wrap up this in five minutes. We are five minutes ahead of schedule. So this is one example of non-exclusive license. I was talking about exclusive versus non-exclusive. This is one classic case, this is the very first successful case of making a recombinant, a recombinant uh, protein. Nowadays, recombinant proteins are like so, com so common. These are the backbone of the biologic industry in so many different indications, so many different diseases. So Bohen and, uh, Boyer and Cohen, who were in UCSF and Stanford University, they were the first one to make a fully functional recombinant protein, somatostatin, and they got a patent for this, for the product. That means the recombinant product and the process. That means the process how you make a recombinant protein. Now this was a this was a platform technology. Every single lab in the world uses I mean molecular biology lab essentially works on the same principle. Principles are not going to change. So they what they did was that they gave non-exclusive license to many, many companies for this because it was not possible for any one company given the wide scope of this technology to work on it. So they gave it to as many as possible companies. Well, it was not, so these were the in inventors, but it was the, I must say, the head of the technology transfer office at the Stanford University, I don't have his picture, which I should have ideally, who did all, who paid all the game, who decided how to do, to whom he should give, when he should give all these technologies, 
So throughout the life of 17 years of this patent, they gave license for molecular cloning technology to 478 companies, which is one of the highest in the domain. And these 478 companies made more than 2,400 products and they gave a revenue of more than $250 million to Stanford University and UCSF. Not that, I mean, they, by, by their own will, the university said, okay, we have got enough of money, we don't want any money. After that, they gave the licenses just for free. They stopped taking royalties on, from their own will. Now, we are talking about, since the morning, about what the inventor wants, what, I, what they have done, what they deserve, how they should negotiate, but we should always think about the potential licensee also. What is their viewpoint? How they look at the term sheet? What are they expecting from a technology? What they want the inventor or the technology uh, to be at what level and all. So that is what I have written here, what does a licensee want? What does the industry want from the technology or the inventor? They are, from the technical point of view, they are interested in technologies which are novel. Okay, if it is novel, it is new, there is no other solution available in the market. Uh, say for example, uh, we are all doing RT-PCR during COVID was the standard, it was a gold standard for finding out whether there is any, somebody is having, uh, is COVID positive or not. But in remote setting, if there is somebody, if in a place like 200 away from, 200 kilometers away from Chandigarh, you cannot get a RT-PCR test done in a single day. So these rapid antigen tests using those little chips, that is a little flow assays was essential, right? So that is a different technology. It was on a different technology, platform technology again. So if we have something similar to that, something unique, different, which has a technical, practical advantage over existing technology, such technologies are relatively easily taken up. There can be a downside also. It can not be easily taken up. I will, it is again uh, another session to explain that. Uh, it should have technical superiority. I will not go into detail, that is obvious. They, the, the licensee will see what is the unmet need. Is it solving a really a problem? So coming to the COVID problem, RTPCR were done okay, in series in, in uh, bus stands and railway stations on the run on a highway, people were doing these rapid antigen tests. So it is solving an unmet need. That means on the go, you have to have a sort of answer whether a person is COVID positive or not. So whether a technology is solving any unmet need that we have to highlight, whatever the technology is, how big is the market size? It's purely from commercial point of view. See, industry will think from commercial point of view, unlike inventors and researchers. So it is a different world, debatable, but that is how the reality is. Competition, they will say really how many, if I want to take your technology, okay, there are, uh, are there three companies who are providing rapid antigen tests, or there are 30 companies providing already rapid antigen test. So he can still license, in license technology from the inventor if he thinks there are not many, many people in the game already. If he is a laggard, if he is late in the game, then they will not take the technology. TRL level, uh, one to nine, sorry. TRL one is the low, is the lowest stage of development. TRL nine is the highest, so higher the better. Intellectual property, these are some IP terms. Freedom to operate, what is the geography? If I tell him, okay, I have made the best molecule in the world, you know, this is going to solve the uh, problem with, uh, with cancer. But then I tell him, I have a patent only in India, but I want a global licensing uh, deal. He will say, are you joking? Right? It's not possible. So where is the geography and how much life of the patent is left? I tell them I have a great patent, you know. It will solve the environmental problem from uh, Tamri industry. They are one of the most polluting industries in the world. But uh, I tell him that, you know, the 15 years of the patent life is already gone. The obvious answer I am going to get from the inventor, from the industry is, sorry, it's a great product, but given the fact that only five years of patent life is left, I am not interested. So you have to engage with a potential company earlier in the life of the patent. Very from my experience, own experience, theoretically, what I have seen is uh, first three years, 
I am talking about the therapeutic domain technologies only because uh, they take a long time to develop. Okay, even if I license out any technology, any therapeutic molecule, and uh, but to get a clinical trial and coming into market may take 10 years extra. So the already 10 years of more than 10 years of uh, market life, the company has already already lost. So we have to see from their perspective also. Okay, so the longer the patent life, the better it is to negotiate and convince them. Others are, is the technology economically feasible, is it scalar can be done or not, obvious. Very quickly, flying around, I will go through TRL levels. Uh, there are, these are technology readiness levels. Anybody has heard, among the students, have you heard about the TRL? How many of you have heard about the word TRL? You can raise your hands. Okay, good. So it is due for you. So TRL, that is technology readiness level, is something which tells about at what scale, stage of development is your technology. Uh, the, there are total nine TRLs, they which are broken into three groups each. First three are research level, that means you know it is there is a technology, there is something which can work in the lab. That's all, proof of concept. Next three is at developmental stage. For example, uh, Dr. Naveen was talking about first they tested that electroeutrophication process in the buckets. That is a proof of concept label that he discussed. He mentioned about after that successful results, they were motivated and now they have permission to do a, a pilot uh, scale study somewhere in the Sukhna Lake. So that is at the, at the developmental stage. That means on site you are checking at a pilot study, small study. And finally is the deployment stage. That means beyond pilot, when you are really working it on a full scale in a real, in a real realistic scenario. That is the deployment stage. So research, de development and deployment stage. That is how the TRLs are uh, segregated. The higher the, uh, the deployment, uh, if the higher the uh, TRL level, the closer you are towards the successful translation of your technology. So the company whom you want to license, they know, okay, the de-risking has happened, okay, uh, these are the checklists, they have done these, these things. So if I take the technology from this inventor, there is a decent chance that it will not fail in the real environment. So that is easier to convince them. That is why TRLs are important. If you want to know more about TRLs, this is a very highly recommended that you go, just go, just type BIREC and TRL on Google. BIREC has its own uh, very, very specifically defined TRLs for different technologies in different domains. The technology in therapeutics for vaccines, small molecules, proteins, the TRLs labels for all these can be different. They are very clearly defined, you can go and read that. Again, TRL for uh, medical devices can be different from diagnostics. And uh, so, that is uh, one unique source. I will skip this. These are few things that our office have licensed to some companies. So, there was a adjuvant therapy for sepsis. Uh, it will delay, it will elongate, delay the spread of the disease of sepsis, which is usually three days, it can increase to a bit more and this technology, this molecule has been licensed to one Dutch company, Survivex. Here we have CKM CEO with the Dutch Prime Minister. This was done during their uh, G20 visit, summit visit to India last year. One technology that we have licensed out is germicidal coated fabric. This was very uh, made at a high scale during the COVID pandemic. This was this from one faculty, Dr. Praveen Memula from Blisk campus, instant that I mentioned you about. Uh, here there is a mask which you can coat with this germicidal fabric and the advantage is that it can withstand more than 40 washes. So again, a very practical uh, solution. It was licensed to Color Threads and later sub-licensed to Aditya Birla group. The same faculty made another, another uh, solution which is a novel formulation for deactivating toxic agents basically these are neurotox neurotoxins and pesticides so he made a formulation that you can apply on the body you on a gel or it can be put up also on a, on the textile fabric 
you can wear it if the during spraying in the fields when this uh, toxic falls on your body or on the body suit it can be uh, deactivated it can be so safeguarding the physical health of the farmer it was developed in instem and it has been licensed already to sapio this slide again i will slip skip this is again google which was licensed to somebody now the fact is that what happened the last stage is commercialization what happens here once you have to license out your technology to the company or any entity what they will do you know any technology is not market ready from the day go so they will they may continue to develop the technology to make it literally market ready take for example any therapeutic molecule they will still have to go do a lot of clinical trials after that they will have to get regulatory approvals then they will have a lot of sales and marketing strategy and marketing channels so they will be spending a lot of money on the technology to really bring it to the people and if take for example if you design a medical device or a diagnostic device they have to train the people who will be really using it uh, on the field so a lot of money and time goes into it so there is a significant contribution from a relevant industry partner and that's why that's where finding a relevant industry uh, licensee is important you cannot simply just give your technology to anybody who is having money it's about finding a complementary partner who can really bring it to the to the people i will skip this in the interest of time with this i will finish my talk i have taken some amount some time extra sorry for that if you have any questions i am more than happy to answer or we can uh, take it after the closing of the session thank you okay one question is there So how long does a patent last and what are the differences between attaining a patent globally and nationally? Okay, a patent life is uh, on standard is uh, 20 years and you ask about what is the difference between global patent and, and a national patent, like national how to patent. attain it. Yes. So the standard way how a patent is filed and granted is that say if you are a, if you are a researcher from India, okay. then the first step of getting a patent is that you have to file a patent in your home country so you have to file a patent in India if you are a researcher in Japan you have to first file a patent in your home country that means Japan if you are in America you have to file in America first okay after that uh, you within a period of again 12 or 18 uh, 12 months you have to go for a national phase filing in other countries national means in whatever nation you want to file a patent okay that you have to do within 12 months of priority date priority date means priority is a date the day you file a patent in your home country either provisional or complete it does not matter within 12 months unless exception is that if you go with a, so we were talking about the pct route i yes. said if you want to file a patent suppose in many countries okay five six countries ten countries whatever uh, in that case going for a pct route becomes more sensible because it will reduce your labor in terms of otherwise if you go for a 20 you have to do 20 different applications and what not okay that will increase your workload uh, so that is how why, why the this P, the pct uh, system was made but more importantly, it gives you a longer window of 30 months. So instead of 12 months, you have a time of going for national phase filing in those 5, 10, 15, 20, 100 companies in a period of 30 months from priority date instead of, instead of 12 months, which you will be doing if you don't go for a PCT route. Now, why do you have to do it in the first case, right? The reason is, patent filing costs a lot of money and maintaining a patent in a longer run can cost you even more. I mean, it depends on how many countries you want to file a patent, right? It can run into several lakhs to, I mean, several millions of dollars also in a long run. So, and why are we doing this? In the, inter in the commercial interest that we should have a commercial interest. 
Now, if I make a technology, I want to make a patent file in 10 different company, countries, but I don't know from where my revenue is going to come, right? Does it make sense to file a patent in those 10, 20 com countries? No. So first we have to figure out from where my revenue is going to come. I told you, if you do a provisional patent, you know, if you, you can do a provisional if you don't have a lot of data. But uh, after that, uh, yeah, I know that it will take me four years to at least uh, get my, you know, get this product into market. But four years, uh, I mean, if, I mean, by the, I mean, after 12 months, I also know I cannot go for a national phase filing if I don't go from a PCD to T route. So that is why the PCD is there to elongate your window. So that you make sure from where you are going to uh, get your revenues. So maybe from fourth year I can start generating some revenue. And uh, I have so 12 into 4, 40, sorry, my calculation is, is wrong. 30 months. It will give you 30 months. So I think uh, in 25 months I can start generating some revenue. It gives me a room to think, okay, this will be my revenue. It is in these many countries. I have a good amount of data. Now, instead of filing patent in 20 countries, let me file only in five countries. So we have to be realistic in our approach. Uh, that answers your question? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. So how many patent? Uh, so how many licenses uh, licenses can be issued for a particular patent? If it is a non-exclusive license, it can be as as many as you can as you can go for. There is no limit. If it is ex exclusive, usually so exclusive word also we have to define uh, very clearly. If I say uh, say uh, I can give you. Say for example, I made a, I made one drug, therapeutic drug. It is a biological molecule. It has, it can, it can help you in prevention of macular degeneration, which causes blindness in senior citizens, and it can also help in prevention from spreading of cancer in the body. Okay, so I can give you an exclusive license only for to, to a company to supply only for macular degeneration and I can give a second license to another company, ex exclusive license only for uh, treatment in uh, oncology. And again we can break it down. I can give an exclusive license to a company which is making this oncology drug for cancer. In North America alone, I know their market is only in North America. They have no access in other countries. And I gave exclusive license to another com uh, company to uh, to market and, man and manufacture in Southeast Asia, Africa, rest of the world. So, so I mean that is how it goes. So you have to be that means you have to be clear to what entity are you talking to. Right? It answers your question, I guess. Or right. so very simply, you say, okay, I give you license, global license for whatever indication, you use it for whatever you can, but you give me the amount of money, the amount of money, that's all, that is easier. Yeah, thank you. Sir. Thank you. Any questions we can also, we have, I think, uh, we have time, so we can do it after the session also, thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, now I'll request Dr. Ashima Pata, convener for the event, to express our collective thanks for making this workshop a resounding success. Uh.
Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for being here today. I want to extend a sincere vote of thanks to our principal, Dr. Ajay Sharma, and management of GGTST College Society. Their visionary leadership and unwavering support have been truly inspiring. We are grateful for their commitment to fostering an environment of learning and growth. We are greatly indebted to our honored speakers, Dr. Chetan Chandola and Ms. Sonia, Somya Rajgopal, whose expertise and insights have proven invaluable in shedding lights into the ways how the students can transform their academic learning into startups and how they can fit into the industry. I want to acknowledge the relentless efforts of my support system, my colleagues, and my student volunteers who have worked tirelessly to ensure the seamless ex execution of the workshop. Lastly, I want to express my appreciation to all the attendees for being a part of this gathering. Your presence and enthusiasm has made this event truly special. Thank you all once again. Good afternoon, everyone. And good afternoon again to Somya Ma'am and Chetan Sir. Uh, I hope this was a very fruitful session for you. So, this was organized by IIC. I hope most of you are aware of what is IIC. That is Institution <coughs> Innovation Council. Sorry, I am not well, so not able to speak much. But uh, I just want to like, uh, would like to apprise you that uh, all of you are welcome to join IIC, right? And we do carry out all these entrepreneurship related and all these activities. So this will be immensely beneficial for all of you, right? So please take a note, this is not a club. This is a college facility for all of you. And we are really, uh, you know, encourage you to be part of IIC. Thank you so much. And now I invite uh, Principal Sir for the formal group of time. Thank you, sir. So on the behalf of the college management staff member, I propose a formal vote of thanks for Madam Raj Palan and uh, Dr. Chetan. I hope that you must have uh, got insights into the issue. Uh, government is regularly focusing on uh, integrating the academic research <coughs> industry. And this uh, technology transfer, commercialization of lab technology is gaining importance day by day. I hope this exposure will be helping you in later. Sometime when you are at undergraduate level or postgraduate level, you are unable to uh, have the exact, uh, or know the exact importance of the topic and why researches are conducted. And number of times the students are more focused on the syllabi, so they, they are not uh, uh, much clear on the issue. But later on the life, uh, you realize the importance and how uh, it can play a very significant role. So thanks a lot. They have come from the very far of place. Uh, hopefully this uh, idea for collaboration will continue in the future also. And special thanks to the Department of Biotechnology Organizing Committee for organizing it and uh, for the students also for their uh, patient hearing. Thanks. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you all the dignitaries for the informative lectures. Now I would like to request all of you to kindly stand for national anthem. जन जन मन अधिनायक जय हे भारत भाग्य विधाता पंजाब सिंध गुजरात मराठा द्राविड उत्कल वंगा विंध हिमाचल यमुना गंगा उच्चल जल धितरंगा तव शुभ नामे जागे Shamaage, gaahe tava jaya gaatha, jaya gana mangala daayak jaya he bharat bhaagya vidhata, jaya he, jaya he, jaya he, jaya 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 he.
would request our guests and faculty members to head for lunch and volunteers to stay back.